What's up, Parser people? Hey, Parser people. Happy Tuesday. Happy Text ah. Adventure Tuesday. Happy Text Adventure Tuesday to you. So, Jerem, you know more about this author than I do. Tell me what we might expect out of out of this out of this game. Are playing uh, Rope of Chalk by one Mr. Ryan Veter, uh, who I think we are lucky enough to have in the chat today. What's up, man? It's a pleasure to have you. Um, I really like this author's work. What little I played of it, which is actually not that much. Um, but from what I understand, uh, quite prolific, um, <clears throat> usually in Inform 7, kind of a wry sense of humor, very well-crafted puzzles, and some pretty sophisticated mechanical techniques uh, going on under the surface. Rad. Yeah, I, I've only recently started toying with, with Inform, but um, very impressed by anybody who gets anything out of it much less the the things that i've seen out of out of uh the little bit that i've played so uh do you want to get started again all right so we have a note from the editor it looks as though this account will finally be published in 2020 not long after the ninth anniversary of the incident in question. You should expect some explanation for my having taken so long, especially considering how insufferably coy I've been about the story's imminent release on so many occasions. I've had no grounds to blame any of my informants for the delay, neither can I produce any excuse for my own negligence. So all I can give you is an apology. Sorry. As I took my sweet time compiling my notes, and the incident itself became more and more obscured in the fog of the past, a vague, niggling concern grew more and more distinct. The accuracy of my report was becoming vulnerable to lapses of memory, misinterpretations, and transcription errors of the mind, my own mind and those of my informants. I began to second-guess all of my data, searching for corroborations that did not exist, or else finding the verification I wanted, and then doubting my secondary source. I became discouraged. I did that thing you see in movies where I shoved all my papers off my desk in a rage. I stared down from my window at a rainy city, and I contemplated the nature of reality. I, I couldn't continue my work until I had made a deal with myself. I would set aside any commitment to recreating these strange events as they had really happened. I would concern myself only with faithfulness to the statements of my informants, to the facts of their experience rather than to the truth. Now my path was clear. Now my goal was attainable. As I said, I can offer no excuse for this extremely overdue publication, and the preceding statement should not be so construed. I only wanted to tell you all that... I wanted to... Yeah, I only wanted to tell you all that... So I can tell you this. The narrative compiled here purports to reflect only the recollections of the individuals involved. By continuing, you can see that I, the editor, bear no responsibility for the felicitous representation of any objective fact associated with this narrative. Furthermore, you swear or affirm that you will not issue to the editor or publicly report any corrections or recriminations concerning this narrative's accuracy. Geographical, historical, medical, meteorolo meteorological, or otherwise. Do you consent to this? Daram, do we consent? No. Oh. No? Yeah, neither do I. Noted. And that's the end of the game. Great! Awesome! Delight. Let's. All right. Short up. Have yeah. a good day, y'all. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Yeah, I should say while you reload this, that this is uh, pretty typical of the body of work that we're talking about. Um, I really enjoy interactive fiction's ability to play with sort of lens and perspective, right? And like you can do that with a format screw, like that one where you click through Wikipedia entries. Um, but uh, how do I do this though, breaking KFAB? 
to discover, wink, an entirely unpublished and unheralded uh, 1990s computer game uh, for children based on a teen soap opera, um, and then create, excuse me, discover, wink, an entire feelies and catalogs and packaging for it um, is just delightful. And this is kind of in that same tradition where this is a, you know, an account of a real incident, exactly, a real incident, that is giving you things from a certain perspective. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I definitely, and like, I, I know, I know that he's done a sort of sequel to the lurking horror as well, you know, and, and being able to play with that as like metafiction almost, I don't know if that's using that word right, but like, I, I just find that fun. Like it's so much more fun than, you know, uh, I think a lot of different media have the opportunity to play with. Yeah, it's, it's the interactivity of it that draws you in, right? The same way that an epistolary novel that purports itself to be like a bundle of letters that you found in an ancient dresser has that kind of veneer of reality. Yeah, yeah. E even when that, even when that veneer is like so, uh, like obvious, like, I don't know, what... I feel like every child of a certain age and a certain bent read the screw tape letters. I think like... it was just you and me, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, I guess. But like, I, I feel like that, that in particular, like enhances that narrative so much better than if it were like pure prose or something like that. Absolutely. All right. Let's, let's actually consent, I guess. I'm glad you said no. That was the only thing that I did when I tested this was hit. Yes. Uh, was say no to that. And then the game ended and I was just like, that's, that's prime. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Please press any key and we'll begin. Section one. You're covered in sweat. Your clothes cling to you like someone else's moist hands. And your skin feels like someone else's skin. Hina is speaking, but you're only aware of your own nauseating body. Someone interrupts Hina. You guys need a drink? It's Natalie, wheeling her cumbersome old cooler up to the judge's table. Saving you the energy it would take to croak out a plea for help, she produces three bottles of water. Hina and Alec chugs theirs down desperately, and you follow suit, with no concern for how undignified you must look. A cold, wet trickle runs over your chin, down your neck. Then, the bottle is empty. Then, finally, you can think clearly. A rope of chalk... Edited by Ryan Veter. This is actually the second release. I am ha having, like I said, just started playing with uh, with Inform. Even editing that like author line, I find as like just a nice little thing you can do, and it it adds to that kind of feeling that you were talking about that that I really love about text-based stuff in general but you know specifically like taking that moment to be like no 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 I just edited this fine feeling <laughs> huh yeah interesting uh, Curious. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, going back to our uh, what you were saying about um, meta fiction and the the v deer eh, of reality, right? Um, something is going to happen a little bit later that there. You know what? Never mind. Um, <laughs> I played this when it came out. I actually don't really remember a lot of the specifics, but I do remember the impression, which was a strong one. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wonder if it's just like typos or something like that. They're, they're, I, I am personally amazed at how much writing you have to do for one of these. Even, even so, one, one of the projects that I'm doing is just uh, taking a BBC Micro uh, Quill adventure and turning it into inform just to like learn it and it's it's wild to me how much writing is even in that with like at most three lines of text for room descriptions yeah yeah interesting that could be some good uh post game reading so we're at the judges table the softball field's aluminum bleachers offer a meager amount of shade, so this is where Hina decided the judges should sit while the artists work. Hina and Alec are sitting at opposite ends of the table. Your spot is in the middle. The sidewalk, the canvas of the sidewalk chalk tournament, runs west and east. It's been a minute. I'm out of practice. I'm like, where, where's a pen so I can start... Putting maps. Before Hina can get back to what she was saying, Natalie starts in. I came over to let you know. One of the artists has a problem with another artist's art. Hina summons enough willpower to roll her eyes. Who exactly? Uh, Jessica and Xavier. Jessica is the one who warned, wanted me to tell on Xavier. She wanted a judge to come down and make a ruling. Hina torn, turns towards you. Lane, can you take care of this? You nod without thinking. It's too hot to think. Uh, come on, I'll go with you. Natalie waves you over and a tiny spark of encouragement flickers in your overheated heart. Please turn oh. phrase. Uh, let's run run our standard rules. Yep, first three moves. X self inventory, Zizzy. X self. Your name is Lane, and you're a sophomore chem major. Your grades got you into the honors program. Your desire to become a well rounded person led you to join the honors art committee, and your inability to say no has made you a judge for the honors art committee's sidewalk chalk tournament. Actually, your credit hours from the summer semester probably bumped you up, so you're technically a junior. That doesn't seem right. A real upperclassman would have a measure of confidence that you definitely lack. Okay. What do we have? We have a water bottle. And Zizzy. Well, I picked Plover. You win. One, zero, zero. <laughs> Cute. What happens if you do Plover? I also picked Plover, so that's a tie. I try plug. Uh, plug. <laughs> Big plover. I win. God damn it. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely, it is a hallmark of a certain era and a certain like writing style to, to, uh, have good zizzy commands. Uh, so for those of you who were new to our uh, little Tuesday night uh, thing here, I am a uh, lifelong I, uh, interactive fiction fan um, and a literary person, but not a coder. And my lovely co-host is a coder and general tech person, but new to the world of interactive fiction. Yeah, we we play a little bit of everything. Um, I've been playing. Oh, thank you for the follow. Um I have been <laughs> kind of approaching it like a coder and starting from earlier stuff to kind of understand what the heck I'm doing. Um, and J Ram does a good job of being like, no, 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 let's, let's play some stuff. That's really literary, really interesting. Um, we played through gosh, 15 ish, of the uh, 
IF comp stuff. Um, we we played a whole lot of random stuff. But we're not here to talk about us. We're here to talk about this kick-ass game. Yeah, I want to know what this bottle is. I mean, it's a water bottle. It's empty. It's not a good feeling. Okay. Um, to thread the needle, though, I would say that uh, my preferred era of IF, kind of the watermark is when games start having good Zizzy responses. All right. Um, hmm. So, what do we have... Uh... So this is kind of interesting in that I don't think we've had a game where your main nouns starting out are people. Like I mean, may, maybe uh No, not not even uh uh Oh gosh, why am I blanking on the name of it? The one where you're a doctor Oh, um, Weight of a Soul. Yeah, Weight of a Soul. Right, right, right. Let's, uh, let's X some of these NPCs. Uh, we, yeah. seem to have a, we seem to have a crush on Natalie. Yeah, let's start with Natalie. Natalie is a theater major and a fifth-year senior. Instead of acting as a judge, she's the Sidewalk Chalk Tournament's hydration officer. She seems the least bothered of anyone by the heat. Probably because she has the cooler and all the cold water. Hmm. Alright, can we look around again? Yeah. Uh, we have the sidewalk. We have Hina and Alec. Check out Hina and Alec. Hina is a senior, pre-med, and she basically runs the honors program single-handedly. She organized this whole sidewalk chalk tournament herself, and she's already filled the calendar for the fall semester with similar activities. You just pray the other events will be indoors. Her forehead is always furrowed a little bit. She's always working on something. Right now, though, it's like her whole head is furrowed. You can't blame her. Alec, you can't take Alec seriously. Because he doesn't take anything seriously. All you've seen him do around the honors center is goof off and flirt with the underclassmen girls. You have no idea how he's still in the honors program as of his senior year. And why is he here? Maybe the program director told him he had to help out with some bare minimum of events. And he decided to get one out of the way right at the start of the semester. You're already thirsty again. Hey, PTC. Up, oh, PTC. Uh, Natalie gave us the water bottle at the very beginning, and uh, we guzzled it quite unattractively. Uh, we are already thirsty again. This is a little out of left field. What about the sun? You're not supposed to look directly into the sun. <laughs> I'm wearing those cool sunglasses. Blind. The sky is too clear. A few puffy white clouds are always welcome, especially if they provide some intermittent shade. Right now, the sun has nobody keeping it in check. Okay. Let's check out the sidewalk. The sidewalk around the softball field is nice and wide. Perfect for chalk art. All right. Yet we have no chalk on us. No art, no chalk. Well, we're a judge. We don't we don't need chalk. We judge others' chalk. Um So here's So what's kinda interesting is that like especially since I've been in in very extreme two word parser world. I'm kind of thinking outside the box a little bit. Can we just follow Natalie? Sure. She Let's give it a shot. Oh, sorry. Nope. Okay. 
I thought she was going to take us somewhere. Uh, I don't know, west or east? Choice. Um, east. The sidewalk stops well before it reaches the equipment shed, leaving a long stretch of sand in between. Beyond the shed is the intersection of 1st Avenue and 2nd Street, an impassable wasteland. An empty bucket sits near the shed. Natalie follows you. Oh, Natalie's following us. Get that bucket. Get bucket. The bucket might belong to Hina or the honors department or the softball field. It's not yours, that's for sure. Oh, okay. His name on it? Shit. Uh, well, what's up in the shed? Yeah. So I, I looked at the bucket first. It looks a bit like someone forgot to put this bucket back in the shed. And by the time they remembered, they couldn't be bothered to unlock the door. Uh, I bet the, do- the door to the shed is locked. How dare you. Awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers. Examining the shed, it's a squat, unattractive building with a big steel door. A brass spigot protrudes from one of the walls. More nouns. So many nouns. It's so... It is so fascinating, because last week... And the week before, we were firmly in the 80s. It is so interesting to be like nouns on nouns on nouns. Like to be able to look at the sun. I don't know. Uh, um, Yeah, it's it's a level of implementation that I just really appreciate, right? Um, I am not a creator. Uh, I have never written a game myself, right? So again, take what I have to say with a grain of salt. But it always really bugs me when I'm playing a, um... Shit, how do I say this? When I'm playing a game and things are not implemented, you are in a bathroom. The shower curtain has pink flamingos on it. X curtain. You don't see such a thing. Well, no, you just told me that there were pink flamingos in the shower curtain. I would like to see the shower curtain. Uh, yeah. And the level of depth of implementing every object in the scenery is just... It, it's appreciated. Yeah, and it's definitely challenging to like in creating something like that to like sit there and all right let's put in like that that is in part why I, i've been playing with inform is to like all right what does it take to put yourself as an author okay let's like really envision this building this room this outdoor area and to sit there and go okay well like what is there what what can people do? Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're completely right. It, it goes to making it feel, and that's you know the core appeal of of text adventures is that you really feel like this world is manipulable. Like you are in it. Like you can sh- you can push any button, you can move any piece of the scenery, and and get the solution to the puzzle. Right? Um, yeah. It, but it's so much harder than it sounds, is the thing. That, that, that is a tricky thing to do. It, in one of... there, There's three inform textbooks that I've been using. One of them has an entire chapter dedicated to traps you will fall... Put yourself into. And <laughs> one of them is that, like... Um, uh, other than saying like all three of them explicitly are like never implement a kitchen a bathroom you know yeah a kitchen or a bathroom because right. like and I, I understand that I have my grand unified theory of toilets like if there's a <laughs> if there's a toilet in a video game it must flush and if it doesn't then you have not done the bare minimum um, and there are totally games that You know, even modern ones. You know, but I I think... Do you remember in Phantasmagoria, the bathroom? The totally useless bathroom? Oh, that made me so angry. And, like, to be fair to Roberta Williams, that was created in an age when, like, it was not expected to be able to uh, manipulate your scenery like that. Oh, no, no. 
You being can manipulate to, everything. Being able to flush the toilet is just good game design. You could the whole it shut the door and let her go to the bathroom. And like there was all this stuff on the sink and spending however many CDs worth of FMV showing her brushing her hair and touching up her makeup. And this look, could have been on oh sorry. Yeah. Oh, and the, and looking in in the mirror longingly for way too long. Yeah, that actress is really selling it, huh? Um, yeah, we also play FMVs on Fridays sometimes. This must have been uh, the session that I wasn't there for, because I do not remember that, but I kind of want to see it now. Well, you can see it on YouTube, or as a highlight, on Twitch. Um... Smash that like and subscribe, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's look at this spigot. Also, spigot will forever be one of my favorite words because my uh, aunt's dog was named Spigot. That is such a good name for a dog and probably appropriate. Yeah, it was. There's a little tap here for water to come out of, but you'd need one of those little keys to open the valve. Hey, Likes the Bacon, how are you today? Um, okay. All right. So we need an Allard wrench for the valve, and we need a key for the shed lock. Um, is that everything in this room? Um, we haven't tried opening the shed. Maybe it just opens. You pull on the door. It's locked. All right, fine. Shocker. Yeah, I think right. that's everything. Yeah, let's, let's head back and go west then. It's also very hard because... I'm stuck in time puzzle world. So I'm like, wait, can I afford looking? Um, you know, I kind of one more thing. Cause it, this is a real joy of being able to like, look at stuff. Yes. Last year it was impossible to get around this part of town on foot because there was so much traffic. Now, it's impossible because of all the construction. Oh, that's so good. Like, taking a description that is not actually, this is the intersection, but this is what it looks like, but a bit of a peek into your character's head, and uh, as well as their thoughts on, well, hmm, all the damn construction right now. Yeah, and like, I don't know, just <laughs> thinking about my college experience, yeah, that that is the kind of thing you would say about an intersection. I'm really, I'm interested in how much, uh, like, characterization there is, because I remember that from, from the little bit of taco fiction that I played. Oh, yeah. Was yeah, let's, that, let's, like, oh, yeah. Sorry. let's get the show on the road, because there is so much good stuff to see in here. Yeah, we've gone to two whole rooms. <laughs> All right, so we're at Victoria's Space. I'm gonna... Let me rethink this slightly. For those of y'all just joining us, we are the judge of a college sidewalk chop competition. Um, so we presumably need to wander around and interact with all of the artists on display. Although at some point we need to get a damn drink. It's scorching out here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm uh, frantically redrawing my map on a different sheet of paper because I drew my boxes way too big. We're on Victoria's space. The sidewalk bends south and east here at the edge of the parking lot. Victoria is hunched over her square of sidewalk, filling in the details of a huge, twisting python. A plastic container is nestled in the grass nearby. Natalie follows you. Well, uh, it's Victoria. Victoria is one of the freshmen you met when you were helping out at orientation. Right away, you get the sense that she was trying hard to be different just for the sake of being different. You should have expected she'd come up with a chalk drawing calculated to freak everyone out. Well, let's the Python then. Yeah.
Victoria's serpent crisscrosses her entire square of pavement, coiling over and under itself like a Celtic knot. Its fanged jaws fill up the center of the composition. The tip of its tail is nowhere in sight. Having completed the snake's undulating outline, Victoria is now coloring another tangled web, the reticulations of its scales. Natalie offers her a bottle of water, which she gracefully accepts. The two of them take a seat on the grass. Looks like a lot of work, Natalie says. Victoria shakes her head wearily. I could have picked something easier, she says. Or I could have just stayed home, but Hino really wanted me to come. I know what that's like, Natalie says, and she gives you a meaningful look. A lull ensues. Presently, Natalie stands up again. Do you want to ask Consummate, Natalie? Please. Consummate, please. Sorry. You know I had to do it to him. <laughs> what should we ask Natalie about? Um, do you want to just ask her for another bottle of water? She's probably going to tell us no, but we'll shoot our shot. Oh. Could I get another bottle of water? You asked, trying not to sound desperate. <laughs> of course you could, young lady. Natalie relieves you of your empty bottle and gets a full one out of the cooler. There you go. As cold as it gets, for all that's worth. Feels plenty cold to you, and you thank her sincerely. No need to thank me. Just doing my duty as a hydration officer. Dialogue tree! The dialogue, dialogue tree. tree! The dialogue tree klaxon is sounding! Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, uh, PTC, earlier there was a line about how, like, you couldn't keep your eyes off her or something. A spark of joy in our overheated hot uh, heart. Yes, thank you. Say, girl, have with them digits. Um... How you like that snake? <laughs> hey, how do you like the snake? <laughs> you maneuver Natalie to a spot where you can talk without being overheard. <laughs> how do you like this snake? You ask. I love it. It's creepy. Creepy is a good thing. I love creepy. Well, okay. She takes a second to consider. There are different kinds of creepy? She concludes. Um, do we want to ask her anything else? I'm kind of curious. Try try asking her about the snake again. Just see if there's a different response. And then nope. if not... Same response. Um, yeah, go figure. I guess how's it going? <laughs> this is about as badly as I talk to someone I'm interested in. How's it going? Natalie shrugs. Oh, I'm fine. She really is. It's like the heat isn't getting to her at all. How we... are you so chipper? Yes. How are you so... You lick your lips. Chipper isn't really the word you want to use. Natalie catches your meaning. Two things. A positive attitude and staying hydrated and a willingness to fully embrace my situation. But that's part of the first one. Oh, God. All right. How did you get to be the hydration officer anyway? Well, at last year's event, I was in Hina's position, and it turned out to be really stressful. So I asked her if I could do something a little more low-key this time around. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> New Jersey has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Natalie. Hey, no problem. Um, I bet the plastic container has chalk in it. Sure. It looks like something you'd store leftovers in. Victoria notices you looking at it, and she takes a break from her snake to explain. Hina said there wouldn't be any prizes for this tournament, and I thought that was a little sad, so I sewed these. She pulls the lid off the container, revealing a collection of colorful ribbons. 
An involuntary aw passes your lips. Don't worry, the judges get ribbons too. I just thought it'd be fun, but that's for later. She closes the container and returns to her drawing. Yeah, no, why is Victoria not best friend? All we can do here? Yeah, I think that's all we can do. It, uh, let's check out the parking lot. Um, yeah. The last intact stretch of First Avenue provides access to the parking lot, so people can still visit the softball field. Waves of heat shimmer above your fellow honor students' cars. Not having a car, you had to ask Kino for a ride to the event. She acted like it was no big deal. Shout outs to the Carlos crowd. Shout outs to the Carlos crowd, but more shout outs to the people with cars who ferry our lazy asses around. Um, let's go south, I suppose. Yeah. So the sidewalk continues north and south between the softball field and a steep hill. Rachel has been assigned a square of cement near a steel bike rack. At the moment, Rachel is stretched out on the grass, soaking up the sun, eyes hidden behind huge sunglasses. Her phone lies in the grass next to her. Her chalk jaw drawing, a simple slogan, is already finished. Natalie is right behind you. Yeah, on both of those counts. This is cute, and it's not that Natalie isn't a lovely name, but the H does feel a bit extraneous. I like spelling Natalie that way. I think it's cute. Well, um, I, I am deeply curious. What's the slogan? You glance from the art to Rachel and back. You bite your lip. The sidewalk chalk tournament isn't really the right setting for a statement like this, but Rachel gave Hina plenty of notice to what she was planning to do, and Hina told her it would be okay. Natalie makes a pointed sort of huffing noise. Rachel doesn't seem to notice. What's the slogan? Rachel's art isn't really a priority right now. Wow. Probably just like the joke is you're meant to sort of draw your own insert inflammatory political statement here. All right. So let's let's start getting our NPCs in order here. Um, Victoria is the sulky goth freshman. Natalie is secret crush slash um, hydration officer. Tina and Alec are fellow judges. And do we know who Rachel is to us? Uh, no, uh, but she's wearing short shorts and a tiny top. It doesn't strike you as a totally appropriate outfit, but maybe she knew it was going to be so unbearably hot. Kind of like Natalie, maybe? Hey. Well, let's check out. Writing notes frantically. Can we check out her phone? Yes. Inappropriate. Likes the bacon. I am going to. I am going to choose to believe that is the case now. X phone. You can't help but notice a notification as it pops up. Someone just texted her saying, "Haha, it sucks to be you." Hard to argue with. Yo, what? Is, I'm sorry. Why are we so? Uh, I I love this. I love this in particular because so many protagonists of these games are blank slates on which you're supposed to project yourself. Mm. On the other hand, why are we so mean to her? What did she do? We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, ask. Rachel about art. Talk to Rachel. You look Rachel over, wondering if she's even awake. 
are you doing okay? Why did you pick this? Forget about it. No. No. I need to understand why we don't like Rachel. Uh, which one sounds better? I think one is a little accusatory. Let's maybe just tell me about it. Oh, maybe yeah. two is a little accusatory too, though. Hmm. Well. No, no, it, it just, I, I just, I'm fascinated by this. Uh, it, and like I said, in part because we just came off a very, like, declarative kind of writing style uh, from the game that we played for the past two weeks. I'm actually really excited at how wildly different this is from Amnesia in particular. Um, yeah, let's go with two. That sound good? Well, you don't really have the energy to engage, but Natalie is on it. Hey, Rachel? Go away. You want some water? Yes. Rachel says, raising an open hand. Natalie places a full bottle in her fingers, and she sits upright enough to drink it without spilling all over her face. Oh, thank you for the raid, Saber Snipe. Hey, hey. How are you tonight? Um, okay. Let's try option two. Uh, that was what I tried for option two. Oh, was it? I'm sorry. Uh, option one run. You hesitate. Natalie loses her patience. Hey, there's plenty of time left. Maybe you should add an artist statement so we know what you're really trying to say. Rachel's lips part. Buzz off. Okay. Forget wow. about it. Yeah, not a lot we can do. Key. Um, kind of yeah. seems like Rachel hates everybody. We definitely don't like her, yeah. Or Lane, excuse me. I, I, I personally... Um, okay. Alright, well... Do, do, do. I'll check out the bike rat. Hi, Saber Snipe. How are you today? We are judging a... Uh, we are judging a sidewalk chalk tournament. Bar is a thing that I really wish had existed when I was in college. I would have slayed. Are you kidding me? We did, um, on the student union, they had, uh, big glass sort of doors or something, or walls on one of the, the sides, and they did, uh, that kind of, like, washable paint as a, uh, as a contest. Like, everybody oh. got one pane of glass. Fun. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it? I mean, look yeah, at the Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, maybe the hill? Or the bike rack. Did we try the bike rack? We did not try the bike rack. There's a bike rack. Are there Pokemon in the bushes? Sorry. Someone is Pokemon pilled. The hill on the west side of the softball field is pretty steep and overgrown with bushes and wild grass. I feel like this might be a dangerous way to word this, but X rack. The bike rack is a frame of thick metal bars. There are no bikes hitched here at the moment. Okay. I guess uh, we, tried talking. Yeah, oh. we tried talking to Natalie uh, a few moments ago, likes the bacon, and she was basically just chip her at us. Yeah, yeah. Although she did perk up when we turned her away. That's nice. Um, yeah, let's go south. Sure. So we're at Jonathan's space. The sidewalk turns from north to east at the border of a small wooded area. Jonathan is sitting on a wooden balance beam, contemplating his drawing. His sidewalk square has been divided into a grid of hexagons. 
Overlaid on a bird's eye view of a snow-covered island. Ooh, pretty. Hexagons are the best of guns. Um, okay. Let's look at Jonathan. No, it's Jonathan. Plays lots of Catan. <laughs> Jonathan is a sophomore, like you. Unless you consider yourself a junior. Uh, but you don't. He's been one of the more approachable guys who hangs around the Honors Center. You manage to get into the same section of Native Peoples of North America that he's in this semester. Hopefully he didn't think you were weird for asking. Um, okay. Interesting. Let's look at the beam. Someone erected a balance beam just off to the side of the sidewalk, even though a bench would have been a lot more convenient. Jonathan's notebook is resting on the beam next to him. Scope that notebook. Scope that notebook. Shamelessly read somebody's notebook. You can't get a good look at the notebook while Jonathan's sitting next to it, but you can see a sketch of his island with its hexagonal grid and a bunch of little labels. <laughs> What about the labels? Can we read the labels? No. Each hexagon of the... So I looked at the grid. And then, this is what I mean about like... Um, God, I wish I could remember... A combinatorial explosion. That's what they, they called it. Um, where like... In describing something you have to use nouns. And so a savvy IF player is going to then inspect that noun. And then you have to use more nouns to describe it. And they're going to inspect those nouns. And it ends up being this like huge authorial challenge to be like, all right, how deep do you go? Um... Uh, um, but the thing is, though, if you figure out ways to get around that or to judo throw it into part of the game itself, like then you unlock the magic. Yeah, I, I played. Um, played is maybe a weird word for it. Uh, oh, my gosh. I think I sent it to you. Um, this game where it was all just like lists of things oh yes um uh nested nested yep um so all it is is just like a drop down list of things and you start with the universe and then you click it and it's like well the universal center and a bunch of like uh galaxies or something and you go to the galaxy and it has the galaxy core which sometimes has a black hole in it and a bunch of like uh, galaxy arms. And then you go all the way down and you can get all the way to the quarks inside of the elements of the rocks of like a planet. And then you go into the quark and inside that is another universe. It, it was very interesting, like but like, can... oh sorry, like a a extreme version of that, where the whole game was just finding that. Two things. Thing one, I like when you can go into the whales' minds and they're just thinking about krill. Yes. Uh, thing two, I, I really enjoyed Nested, and yeah, it's a fascinating concept. It felt a little unfocused to me, um, which is, to be fair, is kind of the entire point of the game, right? Um, there are a couple of titles that do it really, really well. Uh, one of them that comes to mind is um, Lime Ergot. Mm. Uh, we're going to play that on the stream, so everybody in the chat, go check out Lime Ergot. Co-host, save that one, because we're going to do it on the stream at some point. Um but that telescoping method of play, as opposed to moving around laterally on a map, you're telescoping inwards uh, mm. in a sense that rewards super careful reading is just fascinating to me. Yeah, that that kind of 
Yeah, and, and your entire list I basically have reserved for whatever you feel like showing them to me. Hell yeah, baby. Um, the last thing I'll say, sorry, uh, is that um, we're also going to play this on the stream at some point. Uh, Chandler Groover uh, in Eat Me does a really great job of avoiding nouns in descriptions, which is all the more remarkable because the entire point of that game is this really lush, um, grotesque, intense prose. And it's done almost without nouns, if you read it. Like, it's stylistically remarkable. Every time you talk about that game, I want to play it more and more. Oh, it's so good. It's it's pretty, it's, it's a little gross, but it's also incredibly good. Like most things that I like. Well, okay, this this all started because I looked at the grid. Each hexagon of the island map has a little feature drawn on it, a fortress or a mountain or a cottage, but the medium of sidewalk chalk isn't precise enough to render all the detail Jonathan is trying to include. It's like the setting of my novel, he explains, the kingdom of Sialdheim. Oh my gosh, your novel? Please tell us all about it, Natalie says, pressing a fresh water bottle into his hand. Well, the main premise is... He rubs the cold bottle against his head. Wait, are you messing with me? I promise you that I am. Uh, gotcha. He takes a long drink. Oh, Natalie seems like kind of an asshole. Yeah, that that also mean. Yeah, why do we have a crush on this girl? All right, um... I get, is, can we look around the room again? Is there anything else? Uh, Woods? Natalie? Um, the Grid of Hexagons. Snow-Covered Island. I want to see if maybe the island has more information. Nope. What about the woods? A wall of trees stands not far beyond the sidewalk. It's unnerving to see such dense woods in the middle of the city. You know the university campus isn't far from the other side, but it seems like if you wandered in, you wouldn't wander out for some time. Okay. Well, running away into the woods probably isn't in the purview of this game. Uh, yeah, our people in chat have an extremely good point. We should probably actually talk with Jonathan. Talk to Jonathan. I wouldn't hear about his novel. Hey, Jonathan. Oh, hey. He stands up and smiles. How are you? That's a lot of white chalk. Do you have plans for the after this? See you later. Yeah, let's pick him up. Do you have plans yeah. after this? <laughs> you have to think of a way to say that this doesn't sound like you're asking him out on a date. I, I was, but okay. While you're doing that, Jonathan says... Hey, Lane, are you going to go to yoga this semester? Uh, probably, if they still do it. Natalie cuts in. You do yoga, John? Yeah, someone in the dorms was teaching it. You got a spot at the back of the class? So you can check out all the girls' butts? Wow. Jonathan is speechless. Natalie takes this as a yes and nods at you sagaciously. Classic technique, she explains. Okay. Oh, what a dick. Uh, I mean, ask Natalie called him out. Oh, Natalie is being the dick here, I think, clearly. Um, let's ask him about the white chalk. You look over the intricate map, and for some reason, the thing that you say out loud is... That's a lot of white chalk. Uh, don't worry, I brought my own. Well, not my own, exactly. Natalie perks up. <laughs> Where'd you steal the chalk from? There was a box of it, just sitting on the floor in Van Allen Hall. They don't need it. All the classrooms have dry erase boards. You're not sure what to do with this information. Natalie nods approvingly. Being able to swipe stuff from college. Um... Yeah, I might as well complete the dialogue tree over here. How are you? <laughs> Doing great. I've got a comfy little bench here, he says, indicating the narrow balance beam. 
I'll probably stretch out on top of it and take a nap later. You giggle, but Natalie does not. Well, I, I feel like we've gotten all that we can out of this. See you later. Uh-huh. Jonathan is very much focused on his chalk. So I think we can go east. Is that how I'm reading this? Say. Yes. Phase space. There's a rundown old drinking fountain along this east-west stretch of sidewalk between the trees and the softball field. Faye's chalk art is a complicated piece with maybe a dozen characters, and somehow she's already almost finished. Natalie is right behind you. Check out that fountain or check out Faye? Already up to seven NPCs. This is interesting. Um. Yeah, no. Let's stay focused on the prize here. Faye is a sophomore. You haven't gotten to know her very well, but her choice of subject isn't a surprise. You could probably find another Jack Skellington among her tattoos if you looked hard enough. Hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's look at the drinking fountain. A metal knob protrudes from one side of the unlikely looking drinking fountain. Pull, pull knob? You turn the knob, but no water comes out. Not even a dribble. Implementation for, of, uh, turn for pull. Hmm. Um, yeah. No, it's, uh, let's look at Faye's art and then talk to her. In the foreground of the chalk drawing is Jack Skellington with a big grin on his skull. Behind him are the ragdoll lady and the mad scientist and a bunch of other characters from the Nightmare Before Christmas. All sketchy, but recognizable. In the background is the curling tentacle mountain silhouetted by a giant yellow moon. Um, you say, Faye looks up at you. Yes? I'm just wondering if there's, gosh, it's hard to talk. If there are any legal problems with using copyrighted characters. Faye looks over at Natalie. Natalie's eyes go wide. She staggers back in shock. I just remembered. She gasps. Cold dread flows over you. What is it? I'm so sorry. It completely slipped my mind. I forgot to invite Tim Burton's lawyers to the sidewalk chalk tournament. Faye bursts up laughing, and you feel your cheeks getting red. I yeah, mean, I mean, that's a good answer. Pretty good burn. <laughs> All right, Nat Natalie's back on the on the good side. She did thoroughly roast poor Jonathan about his novel, but. but um, okay, let's try, let's try talking to Faye. Anxiety creeps over your skull. You have no idea how to talk to Faye. How's, how's it going? How you falter and Natalie steps in. Hey, Faye, she says, holding a water bottle. What are you doing after this? Faye stares into space. I think I'm gonna head back to my room and stand in front of the air conditioner for like an hour. Or I'm just gonna crawl inside my freezer. You have a freezer? My mini fridge has a freezer compartment. It's tiny, but I'll manage. Faye nods reassuringly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me about your drawing. You try to say, tell me about your drawing, as if you just noticed it and never said anything embarrassing about it. Well, Nightmare Before Christmas is one of my favorite movies ever since I was a kid. I always thought Jack Skellington was really cute. It occurs to you that the honors program is full of weirdos. Mm. Yeah, if... If you only... Like, realize that now... 
All right. Um. Is that? Yeah, I think that's everything, huh? I. I have an entire rant about Nightmare Before Christmas that I will I will spare us right now. Uh, it is not even pretending to be related, but um. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, I'll hear I'll hear your hot takes on Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm, viewer count dropping, dropping. <laughs> Seventy-five <laughs> minutes later. Uh, all right, let's uh, say goodbye to Faye. <laughs> See you later. Sure, Faye gets back to work. Um. Okay. We have the softball field. Do we look at the softball field? So. You can't see the field very well through the fence, but you get the impression that the bases, the grass, and everything else is in pristine condition. Okay. I guess I head east. Is that the direction we're going in? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, one of the interesting games is figuring out all the different ways you could say the nouns oh yeah look at this um that's the same thing as if we said uh x art oh right you are Boop. somehow it started capturing my cursor again all right here finally there's a bench where the sidewalk turns from west to south. The picturesqueness of the spot contrasts dramatically with torn up 2nd Street just a little ways to the east. Jessica is working on a curved block of pavement, drawing a diverse and vibrant array of flowers. Natalie follows you. Oh, oh we seem to... A pretty oh, good op or, or we seem to have pretty good order of operations going here. Um, let's X Jessica, X her art, and talk to her. Sounds good. Jessica is the only person you know of who comes to the honors center just to read. One time you found her reading in the stairwell when the main study hangout area had gotten too boisterous. And she's a junior, a music major. She plays the. I you can't remember the word. Glockenspiel. Oboe? Harpsichord? Harmonious. Bassoon? Alright, yeah, let's look at the art. Jessica has drawn a huge bouquet of lilies, roses, and orchids, all rendered with a level of realism that overwhelms you with the force of a strong perfume. But you're not really smelling anything. That was confusing. Jess... Flowers. Music major. Already, already, person after my own heart. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry, Ryan Beater. I realize this game is not really a dating sim, but we're definitely, definitely <laughs> turning it into one. <laughs> is this not a dating sim? It's mm. about college. Is it all college <laughs> a dating sim? Oh, that is depressingly accurate. <laughs> okay, Second Street, same thing as the... Uh... Oh, no, it's not. Second Street is normally very busy, but it's been torn up for renovation. Now it's an expanse of mud and rubble, bordered by rebar and orange mesh. Um... Sit on bench take a load off you take a seat on the bench and contemplate the wreckage that once was second street the devastation is astonishing you can feel tears welling up in your eyes you get a hold of yourself they're just resurfacing the road <laughs> okay <laughs> I like that um Okay, let's talk to Jessica. Is there anything else? So, let's see what she has to say. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, it's certainly flirting with it, pun fully intended. 
Jessica looks up and wipes some sweat from her forehead. Yes. That's a I, weird option. I love your flowers. <laughs> I love your flowers, you say. I mean, your drawing of flowers. They're gorgeous. Thanks. Jessica is not as enthused. Does she appear to have a problem? Yeah, that's such a weird, like, question. What's the problem here? I'm really sorry, she says, but I don't think Xavier's piece is appropriate. And since it's associated with the honors program, I just think, what exactly is inappropriate about it? Asks Natalie. Well, you should probably see it for yourself, she says, gesturing further down the sidewalk. Oh, no. More walking. All right. Oh, right. Jessica was the whole reason why we had to take a walk. Because Natalie was like, hey, somebody's got to deal with this. Like, all the way at the beginning. Of course. All right. How are you? Jessica sighs deeply. Actually, I'm kind of in a rotten mood. Sorry. Oh, that's too bad. Well, you're supposed to be doing something about it. Okay. How how bad could this be? I mean, I think I think we got everything. Oh. Let's go check out Xavier. Well, see you later. Okay. But please, make Xavier change his design. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Cool, cool, cool. This is where there would be a crosswalk for 2nd Street if there were a 2nd Street. There's a button for the crosswalk, but there's no crosswalk. You feel a little hemmed in by the torn up street to the east and all the trees to the west and south. The sidewalk only goes north from here. Xavier is kneeling over his drawing, hard at work. Natalie comes up alongside, dragging her water cooler behind her. Well, let's look at Xavier. Xavier is an art major, so it's not even fair that he would enter this tournament in the first place. And of course, he has caused trouble. Last year, he did a photography exhibition in the Honors Center. Just an excuse to put up a bunch of naked pictures of naked people. Oh, like, no. Like, unframed, or...? <laughs> I, I guess let's look at the art. Yep. <sighs> On the sidewalk is a curvaceous woman with red skin, goatish horns, and very little clothing. Her lips are parted sultrily, as if she's about to whisper something to you. Your throat feels tight. More interesting than a bunch of flowers, that's for sure, says Natalie. I am inclined yeah, to agree. I, it took me a second to realize how that was worded. Now, now that you mention it... Naked uh, pictures of naked people, right? Like, that's what I was saying. Like, so a, a naked picture is by definition like an unframed, you know, Polaroid taped to a wall, yeah? Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, well. Cool, yeah. I mean... We all we all love Goat Girl. Um I guess let's talk to Xavier. Yeah, definitely. There's nothing else. Ooh, wait. Press button. You push the button. Nothing happens. You giggle quietly. Mm. I I do. While you're trying to think of a way to engage Natalie steps in. Hey, Xavier. Nice succubus. <laughs> Thanks. 
She's in the middle of adding white highlights to make it look like her skin, there's a lot of skin, is reflecting the sun. Did you know Jessica complained about it? I know she didn't seem to like it when she was over here earlier, but what I've learned is people are always going to have opinions. Well, I brought a judge over to make a judgment call. Finally, Natalie steps aside and presents you. Xavier spreads his arms and presents his mostly naked demoness. What do you think? Your head hurts. Uh, nod. <laughs> okay. That's not a verb I recognize. Um... Let's see if we can't talk to Xavier more. So, what do you say, Judge? Well, she's scary. I'll take it, says Xavier. But you're not going to disqualify him or anything, right? Natalie asks. I'll, I think I should confer with the other judges. Natalie scoffs. Xavier shrugs. I, um... Yeah, I just meant to walk back to the judging table and talk to uh, Hina and Alec. Yeah, I guess. I mean, my gut reaction is if Jack Skellington's allowed. <laughs> okay, yeah, we have nothing more to talk to Xavier. And I don't... I honestly don't know how I feel about, like, repeating actions like that. Maybe there was a more elegant way to do that. Oh, yeah, that's a personal pet peeve of mine. Um, I don't think it's the case here, but when the solution to the puzzle is to do X repeatedly, um, I'm sorry, I don't have time for that. Like, Yeah, and also, like, you want, you want what you're writing to push you in a direction of, like, multiple actions. Well, I feel as if we got a pretty good call to action right here. Um, and honestly, thinking about it, I can see where Jessica is coming from, even if she's a bit of a prude. But Tattoo Flash is a perfectly legitimate form of art. Cheesecake is a perfectly legitimate form of art. Nudes are the artiest form of art. The human body is beautiful. Right, what's your problem, lady? You know, what? I wonder if Natalie can give us a little bit of advice. Nope. Yeah. And like, whatever we we've talked to, we talked about this with uh, especially, um, the detective agency game that we played from IF Comp. Dialogue is like the hardest thing to write, and then programming dialogue in. I have or in a parser is like nearly impossible. So totally understand. Hey, all right. Judge's table. At least it's a little shady here. Hina and Alec are sitting on either side of the table waiting for you. Who do we want to talk to first? Well, uh, the chat had actually a very good suggestion that we skipped right over. Uh, what do we, th what do you think I should do? Does kind of seem like uh a direct solicitation for advice from oh, Natalie. I totally missed that. Thank you. This is why we're delighted that you're here. What do you think I should do? What? You stumble. Natalie reaches out to steady you. Hey, are you doing okay? No, yeah. You don't want her to worry about you. I'm just stressed, I think. That makes sense. Let's get back to Hina and see if you can take a little break. You're not as proud as you are exhausted, so you just nod. Okay, so yeah, talking to Hina. Oh, God loves a diegetic hint system. Yeah, Riot Beater's games tend to, uh, I think universally, um, not have hints in them. Um, which drives me a little crazy because, uh, frankly, I'm kind of lazy. But... If you put it, if you do it diegetically, like that is, blah. 
Jeff's kiss perfect. Yeah, I, I... Having played a lot of different eras of games, like, I always forget that Invisiclues exist in the, uh... In the Infocom games. Just because it's so, like, out of... Out of character, almost? It's not quite the word I'm looking for, but, like, uh, out of the story that, like, I don't even think about it. Um... Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I know I know he he posts full source code and uh commentary. Part part of me wants to uh sign up for it just for like the craft portion of it. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, let's let's talk to Hina. I'm actually kind of curious. Hina looks mad. Is she mad at you? She can't be. You haven't done anything yet. Oh, no. You have to tell her about the demoness. What about... What about Alec? Alec seems way too calm about everything. No sense of responsibility at all. Typical. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. So, like, doing state tracking on the external game to then say, all right, well, you've come back here. You did the thing. You've come back. All right, let's talk to Hina, you think? Definitely. Well, Hina asks as you approach. You open your mouth. Sheesh, Hina, can't you see she's about to fall over? Alex stands up and guides you to your chair. You can make your report sitting down. This is the Marines. Hina waits with clenched teeth for you to sit. So, what did Xavier draw that Jessica had a problem with? It was a... You gesticulate weakly, searching for the right words. Natalie cuts in. A big sexy demon with her boobs hanging out. You nod and your body wobbles beneath the weight of your head. Hina slaps her own forehead. For Pete's sake, Xavier. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. But her voice fades away as you slump forward and lose consciousness. And we have changed point of view. Oh, that's cool. Okay, new chapter. New sheet for notes. Lane's head thumps against the table and you leap to your feet in alarm. Hina loses her cool for maybe an eighth of a second. Then she grabs Lane by the, the shoulders. Did she faint? You ask before you realize that yes, obviously she fainted. We need to get her on her back. Hina says before you can make your legs move. Natalie glares at you and steps in to assist. The two of them position Lane on the grass. Hina leans down to check her breathing. So we're Alec now, presumably. Yes. Uh, let's X ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Yes. I'm failing to draw a uh, section symbol on a piece of paper. Oh, that's what that is. Ha! Huh. Um... Yeah, the judge's folding table is set up behind the bleachers, out of the sun, on a strip of bike trail leading east and west. You stand by uselessly, your blood pounding in your ears. You should do something. Your name is Alec. You're wearing a brown shirt and blue jeans. Based on what people have told you, you believe yourself to be average looking. You thought Hina wanted your creative and administrative input on this sidewalk chalk tournament. But it turns out what she really wanted was a warm body to sit at the judge's table. 
You shouldn't be so critical of Hina. She's under a lot of stress. But aren't you under a lot of stress, too? Everyone is. It's the human condition. Oh, I love that. You know, Lean is looking at this guy being like, ah, you know, what a putz, a lady killer, you know, himbo type. But he has a complex inner life like the rest of us. Yeah, yeah, that that's something that I immediately enjoyed, like, as soon as this game started, was that it seems like everybody's kind of an uh, unreliable narrator. Uh, I would also use the term, you know, character empathy, right? Yeah. Um, the same way that um, my love, Hypnospace Outlaw, has, you know, even these characters are exactly limited by their own perspective, but the game itself treats them with empathy. Yeah, yeah. One, one of my... One, one of the people that I follow... Um, why not? Let me let me try a command. I so rarely use these. Mm -hmm. Um. So Lil Country does the point and click pit, and they're doing a run of Hypnospace Outlaw right now. And what one of the things that they're like loving is how in depth the characters are. I love that you brought up Hypnospace because that that's like my favorite part of that is that you end up like, all right, I really don't like this guy. I love this character. Mm -hmm. But but the game treats them with this kind of like respect and empathy that like, mm -hmm. even though, you know, you can kind of see what a basic, actually that's not true. Um, from externally, um, the teenage boy character is kind of a shithead, but you end up feeling for him and liking him because he's a teenage boy, right? Um, this is doing something a little bit different in that we're actually positioned inside of Alex's head, but the effect is very similar. Yeah, um, yeah. What should we do with Lean here? Um... Inventory, maybe? Do we have a bottle of water on us? Yeah. Um, whoops, I was in chat. Empty water bottle. So now, um, we need to get her on her back. Well, let's, let's look at her. Don't tell me with a good idea. Lane looks like she's just sleeping in the grass. Hina is kneeling at her head, gently trying to wake her up. Well, now she's being a little less gentle. Lane's eyes open and she groans wordlessly. Hina tells her everything's fine. Uh, I guess talk to Lane? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh... Another really great streamer I follow. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the game. It's a... I want to say it's a Dreamcast game that used the... Uh, that used the microphone to be what you do. Like, you didn't actually, like, press A to jump. You had to say jump. Oh, I love that. Um, oh, it's so jank. It's <laughs> yeah, wonderful. I... Um, yeah, there were a bunch of Choose Your Adventures um, on the Something Awful forums uh, back in the day, which I believe is the origin story of the Dropsy games. Hmm. Um, but what, what they did was, because uh, they have a, uh, uh, like, for if you spend any bits it does text to speech so Ooh. they they did it so that if you use text to speech they wired the text to speech to the game um it did not work well but it was an absolute riot yeah yeah it was lifeline that's so rad um yeah it's interesting it does not work well uh, they they finally got it like 
they did that because they did an entire stream not being able to get through the uh the tutorial and was like all right how how do i need to talk at this thing anyway uh purser wrestling for a different uh <laughs> different yeah, generation yeah. exactly <laughs> all right oh let's try, let's try to talk to lane um yeah talk to lane lane is nominally awake but she's not really in a talking mood i mean understandable um talk to talk to natalie natalie's the best friend is she okay you ask she's fine natalie says she just needs a rest she seems pretty confident oh now that we're in alex pov we should examine everybody and get his thoughts on them oh yeah natalie has lane's feet up in her lap since apparently that's what you do with fainted people she is way too comfortable with this situation. Why is everyone else on the planet able to handle stuff? Oh my gosh. Okay. Alec is best boy. Hina is petting Lane's head and gently coaxing her back to full awareness. But there's a certain edge to her gentleness, as if she's also very frustrated that someone else is just standing there, watching instead of doing anything to help. Oh my god, I'm trying. We're trying, Hina. The purser is not helping us here. Uh, what about that bigot? Should we go get some water for her? Yeah, uh, let's talk to Natalie. No. Or Hina. That. Uh, talk to Hina? Yeah. Did we try that? No, we didn't. Should I call 911, you ask? Kina doesn't look up. I'm pre-med. I know what to do when someone faints, she grumbles. And I have street smarts, adds Natalie. Then what should I do? Hina closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Get a bucket of water and erase Xavier's demon lady. I don't have time to argue with him. Tell him he can start over and draw something more appropriate, or if he wants, he can just go home. Natalie produces a strangled groan of protest. You just nod. Okay. The perfect encapsulation of the arrogance of the um, young pre-med major. <laughs> I took first aid. I know what to do when someone faints. I mean, fair. Yes, very much Chekhov's bucket. We don't have a key for the spigot. Oh, shoot. Well, I mean, let's go try. Maybe it'll give us a clue. I guess we could fill it from the water fountain. Might take a while. No, the water fountain doesn't work. Shit, you're right. Um, yeah, all right. Let's, we know where the bucket is. Let's do that. Is this a different description of the room? Nah, uh, I'm curious. I'm going to scroll for a little bit. Nope. Oh. Nope. Can only scroll up to section two. Fair enough. All right. Well, let's grab the bucket at least um, and then try to check this bigot. Yeah. So there's a big sand pit in between the end of the bike trail and the equipment shed. Looks like they just gave up on finishing the trail. Also looks like they gave up on reconstructing the intersection northeast of here. Everything's torn up, destroyed, and abandoned. Yeah, yeah. There's an empty bucket on the ground here. It's a classic metal bucket. So, X the shed. A grim, utilitarian structure. Almost like a bunker. The heavy door is shut. There's a brass faucet sticking out of the side. Different person, different words. I love that. Um, okay. Who would have a key? Well, maybe since the world, since our, our goal has changed.
Uh, we we have switched to. Uh... Oh gosh, I've heard, to Alec. We have gotten through precisely one chapter. <laughs> um, um, perhaps yeah. Hina might know where the key is. I mean, she was certainly decisive enough when we talked to her earlier. For sure. Can we just go east? The fence surrounding Highway 6 wouldn't stop you normally, but since you're acting as an agent of the Honors Program and Hina is already kind of mad at you, you should probably play along with some society's arbitrary limitations for today. The bike trail goes west. Uh, okay, okay, fair. I love that so much. No fucking fence could stop me, bro. I, I do love that this is extremely strong philosophy major energy. Alec is best boy. Um, I guess we should just go west then, huh? Yeah, I guess. Now, now I'm just like choosing answers that I know don't make sense. You don't want to venture into the primal chaos of Mormon Trek Boulevard. Your pants would get all muddy. The bike trail goes east and west. Okay. Ask Hina about... It's probably not the right way to do it. Ask Hina about Key. <laughs> Interesting. Is no, Mormon Trek the, the LDS version of Enterprise? I'm sorry, that was cheap. <laughs> what is it? Uh, sorry, I need the key thingy for the shed, for the water. Hina sighs impatiently. Well, this part isn't exactly your fault, is it? She finds the key in her pocket and hands it to you without saying anything. She had the key? The whole time? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. East. Put key in faucet. You place the bucket beneath the spigot, stick the key in the hole on top and twist it. Clear water pours out and splashes noisily in the bottom of the bucket. The resonance is deeply satisfying. You almost feel a little sleepy. As the bucket begins to overflow, you snap back to awareness and turn off the faucet. You pull out the key. You don't want to lose that. Then you pick up the bucket. It's heavy. Gosh. Okay, you can do this. Everyone who has ever filled up a bucket full of water. Why, are, why is it so heavy? It looks like it shouldn't be that heavy, but it is. So many five-gallon buckets filled with water in my life all right let's go back to the bleachers the judge's folding table is set up behind the bleachers uh all of that is still the same all right let's let's head back to xavier and try to wash off this sexy 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 oh right right that's what we need to do <laughs> i was like okay i want to ask you something and you can say absolutely not Can we just pour the water on, on Hina and call it a day? And certainly try. Dump water on Hina. Uh, empty bucket on, on Hina. Um, help me out, Jerram. Yeah, poor. Try seems. poor. Yeah. I'm gonna cheap it out here. Um Wow, why why are you not letting me just save? Computer. Oh no. Pour water on Hina. A feeling of intense guilt joy 
jolts down your spine. He know we get so mad at you. You'd never recover. No. Okay, fine. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the I, again, like the depth of interaction that you're allowed in this is just perfect. That's also like me me thinking a little old school that that would put us in an unwinnable state. Like game over. Hina's mad at you and fires you. To be fair, Hina does seem kind of like a jerk, but if she got mad at me, I also would likely never recover. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, since since we're here, we can always get more water. Yeah, we have a safe state. Fuck it. You raise the bucket over Lane's head. Hina and Natalie shriek at you in unison. What are you doing? Hina cries, covering Lane's face. You told me to get a bucket of water. I thought you wanted it to wake her up with. I told you to use it to get rid of Xavier's slutty demon. Oh, is that what you said? Yes, that's definitely what she said. Natalie adds helpfully. Well, okay, that's what I'll do. What? I didn't ask you, Natalie. Natalie might be up for that kind of gag under better circumstances, but now is definitely not the time. I'm really curious about what Alec thinks about uh, all the various pieces of art we have on display. I am too now. Going going back to the like All right. Yeah. Yeah, there there is absolutely a reason that I, uh, I enjoy playing games with J Ram. one of them is that she absolutely stops to smell the roses. And... Somebody put a... Sorry? Oh, no. Keep going. Somebody put a lot of effort into this. It, it, it's nice to appreciate it. And yes. then, I, I wish I had a more um, accurate or game design -y vocabulary to talk about the thing that I'm trying to talk about, right? But the shifting of POVs that provokes a shifting in the actual environment that you're in is something that's I think literally maybe only accomplishable in interactive fiction, and I love it. Jeez, it's hot. Yeah, okay. So examining the hill, Native Prairie has started to reclaim what slivers of territory it can, and this hill is covered in thick grasses and shrubs and things you don't know what they are. All right, so Alec is a naturalist. Love it. Looking at the art, fiendish eyes, vampiric fangs, and a long grasping tongue menace you from the center of Victoria's composition. It doesn't seem to have a tail. The serpent's coils crisscross and undulate and loop back inescapably upon themselves, drawing your gaze inward, back to its jaws, back to its eyes. The eyes are too vivid. You have to look away. X eyes. Okay. Um, X Victoria. Victoria is facing the hill away from the parking lot, away from her drawing, but she's just staring down at the ground. You step a little closer to Victoria, and eventually you get her attention. Oh, it's so great how the dialed tree options also change, depending on what POV you're in. When we were laying, it was just straight phrases, and this is more like a more intuitive, like, ask her about her art. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Talk to her about her art, the event. Find out how she's doing. Seemed kind of stressed earlier. Eh. 
Hey, are you all right? You ask. Victoria nods without making eye contact. You can't blame her. This heat is unbearable. Make sure she's okay. You take a seat next to Victoria. Is there anything I can help with? She won't look at you. Don't worry about it, she says. You don't always have to fix everything. That doesn't seem right. You can't remember the last time you fixed anything. Oh. But you get up and give her some space. Oh, guys, I love Alec. All right, let's get out of here. All right. Self. Rachel is lying on the grass next to her entry, abandoning herself to the merciless sun. Her eyes are hidden behind ridiculous sunglasses. An empty bike rack stands on the other side of the trail, the foot of the hill. The trail runs north and south. Someone shrieks in pain. Was that a bird? Rachel doesn't react. Did you hear that, you ask? Hear what? Oh, what? I... Are we going to be able to read the surely vulgar political slogan? Oh, I wonder. Rachel sees you coming and props herself uh, up on an elbow so you can see her midriff properly. Hey, it's Alec, she says as if to someone else. Ask her about the noise to tell her you like her outfit. I'm sure we do. Talk about the chalk thing she drew. Talk about the tournament. Ask her how she's doing. Escape from this conversation. Uh, Lane's description of us uh, seemed to indicate that we're something of a lady killer. And I don't know. Tell, I think we should tell her that we like her outfit. All right. Tell her that you like her outfit. No way. That's inappropriate. And she obviously noticed you staring regardless. <laughs> um, I'm split. I want to ask her about the noise, but I also want to talk about the chalk. It changed from uh, about that noise to about that noise again. It did. Uh, I'll ask her about the chalk thing. What's something you could say that wouldn't support any kind of position or start any argument? <laughs> huh. So good. <laughs> yeah, no, there's nothing. All right, yeah, ask about the noise. I swear I heard something. Like a bird screaming? She shrugs. Good for you. Why? Probably not the right Why is she so mean? What did what did anybody do to her? I can fix her. Oh, but how are you? Really? <laughs> yeah, that should be safe. How are you feeling? Wait, no, it's supposed to be doing. Thirsty, she says. You gulp. Um, it's everything. Did we do? Did we get a uh, tournament? Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, that should be safe. How's the sidewalk chalk tournament going for you? You ask in a totally neutral manner. You tell me, judge. She smirks. Oh, gosh. Are we going to try to be clever or evasive? I feel like this is a trap. From what we've been presented to Alex's character so far, he is neither of those things. I guess um, attempt shoot for clever. That's my usual tactic, and it mostly doesn't work. You open your mouth. Something clever. You're good at this. You'll have to... Your head hurts. You'll have to wait and see. Perfect. It's great. Good job, Alec. Uh. All right. Let's get, let's get out of here. Skip oh, let's look at... Look at the oh, art, yeah. definitely, before we go. You give Rachel a little wave and move away. She lies back down to finish her tan. Phew. Rachel's chalk art is just a logo. No creativity involved. She's making a big deal out of it before the event. You've already decided what kind of score you're going to give to her. Even if she did do kind of a good job of copying the logo. 
And it's not because you disagree with her. It's not about anybody's personal beliefs. It's about being boring. Sure. Okay, that's also interesting. Huh, okay. Um, yeah, definitely empty bike rack. It makes no sense for them to put the bike rack this far down the trail, but nothing they do makes sense. All right, let's let's continue going around. We have Jonathan in the balance beam. Jonathan gives you a dark look before turning back down to his work. The bike trail curves from north to east, skirting the edge of the woods. A dry, mercifully cool breeze wafts over you from out of the forest, but it doesn't last long. So Jonathan does not like Alec, clearly. Um... Jonathan has drawn a hex grid over an island covered in snow and ice. What an idiot. Doesn't he realize it's going to melt before the event is over? Uh, okay. Hey, Jonathan. You try to make your voice drip with acid. Hey, Alec. He says back in the same tone. Now it's on. <gasps> Do we try to psych him out, criticize his art, find out if he's going to make a move on Jessica, or take the high road? Absolutely not taking the high road. Uh, I rescind my Alec is best boy. Alec is okay boy. Um, yeah. I mean, gets right to the point. Just criticize his art. I was going to say ask him if he's going to make a move, but... Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely oh, boys fair. boys are complicated. You have to do this delicately. You ask him, any big plans for the weekend? He knows you mean with Jessica... Not really, other than this. How about you? That snake. He's turned it around on you. Yeah, I actually... Actually, you and Jessica don't have anything planned. Like what? Real subtle, Jonathan. J just... Just hanging out. Jonathan fixes you with an icy glare. Well, no, that that's not an icy glare. What is that look? You realize he's staring past you and glance over your shoulder. There's nothing there. Oh, God, we failed that. Failed that, that interaction badly. I love how Alec is just utterly hapless in conversation. Um, do we want to be mean? How mean can we be? get the sense that our interactions these in these conversations are affecting too too much of the plot afterwards although please feel free to correct me if i'm wrong um i don't get the sense that there's like a relationship up or down mechanic that's going on depending on like depending on how we maneuver these these uh interactions there is in my heart there's in our heart that's true <laughs> I'm, i can't i can't I personally, as a person, cannot criticize someone's art. However, we did just get horribly beaten in a war of uh, <laughs> impotent machismo. Let's try to psych him out. What a perfect turn of phrase. <laughs> you better finish up your entry, you tell him. The judges will be coming around soon to render judgment. He doesn't blink. I'm almost finished, he says. Well, that didn't work. Yeah, let's... We're clearly getting beaten here. 
Let's stop wasting time. Well, I better get going, you say, and Jonathan nods. The tension is so thick you can barely breathe. I know we have... I know the game has told us that we have a goal. But we have power, J-Ram. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what Jessica says. I think this game is is getting to my like soul we have to, a little bit. We have to talk to Faye uh, first as well. Oh right. As you continue past Jonathan's drawing, you hear a voice behind you. Jerk! You whirl around. What did you just say? Jonathan looks up. I didn't say anything. Are you sure? Jonathan blinks. Well, um, well, pretty sure, I guess. Oh, boy. Coming back for him. It's fine. Faye is sitting uncomfortably in the grass across the tra- trail... Across the trail from a drinking fountain. It looks like the sun has gotten the better of her, but her chalk art is finished. A lurid um, homage to the nightmare before Christmas. The bike trail runs east and west between the woods and the outfield fence. A green... Sc- oh, sorry. what's up? I, I've got to see what he thinks of this homage. <laughs> A grinning skeleton man welcomes you to an undermedicated child's version of hell. Pop-eyed demons and insectoid vampires gamble under the jaundiced moon in the black shadow of a gigantic coiling tentacle. The nightmare things glow garish orange and green and red against the stygian dark of Halloween night. You feel ill and force yourself to look away. Is so much more badass than what Nightmare Before Christmas actually is. Which is probably part of the point. Uh, you want to talk to Faye? Or just speed run over to Jessica? No, no. I, I definitely want to talk to Faye. Um, also, I am getting this out of you at some point. I desperately need to hear your your 75 minute screed. Uh, and the TED talk begins now. <laughs> Faye is sitting with her knees up by her chin and her arms around her legs. There's something haunted about her expression. But aren't you feeling haunted too? Everyone is. It's the human condition. You walk up to Faye and wave. She winces a little and you take a step back. No, she says weakly. Please don't leave me, Alec. Oh no. Ask her what's Fun. going on. What's wrong? I don't know. Everybody's acting weird, and I'm acting weird. I feel like she looks down the path to the east. Xavier's art is down there, and Jessica's. You feel like what? Something bad is going to happen, or something bad already happened? Well, she definitely doesn't need to hear about lane fainting. As somebody who has gone to the ER with a panic attack, that leads nowhere (laughs) good. Um, yeah, yeah. I feel like trying to talk some sense into her is not going to be especially fruitful. Maybe we can comfort her? Yeah, let's try comforting. You put a this hand is going to go great. F- yeah, it'll be perfect. You put a hand on Faye's shoulder. It's awkward, but you leave it there. Let's calm down, okay? Take some deep breaths. Faye tries to take a deep breath. Perfect. That's perfect. Are you feeling any better? She shakes her head. You never were any good at this kind of thing. Um, I'm going to try asking her what's going on. That, um... Well, yeah, let's try it again. Oh, yeah, that was the same thing. Okay. I mean, we definitely don't want to tell her about fainting. We could try to talk some sense into her. I feel like that's not going to do anything. Let's just tell her we'll come right back. Although she is, she is now 
saved. Look, Faye, I've got to handle a little errand for Hino right now. But I'll be right back and we'll figure this out together. You won't, she says, but she doesn't try to stop you. Okay. No, I, I will because I have goals. But, uh, okay. Oh, no. Jessica is sprawled across her field of flowers, sobbing softly. The bucket falls from your grasp. And you run to her, fall to her side, touch her cheek. What's wrong? Life is wrong. The world is wrong. Our sorrow, which is the smallest portion of human misery, is too much to bear. We can't fix anything. We can't help anyone. We can only cling to each other and weep. And cold water crawls over the pavement, sinking into our clothes. Oh. This took a turn. I was just going to ruin somebody's day, but no. <laughs> the idea is not that the world itself is merely an illusion. That's stupid. What's really going on is this. Reality is out there, obviously, but there's this veil of appearance that inhibits our ability to experience reality. When you manage to push through this veil, you'll realize that, in fact, reality is extremely real. And you're almost there. You can feel the surface of the world melting away beneath your fingers. Ancient signatures painted on smooth, damp stone. Enormous machinery thrumming peacefully blowing warm, wet wind over your face. An engine screeches to life and breaks your concentration. There are people in here, talking over the fans, walking around like they own the place. They're getting into their cars and they're leaving. Why are they leaving? Exit. East. Uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, talk about a prestige, right? I, I, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm like literally taken aback by like what I'm supposed to do. Um, okay. played this game really? before i have something of a clue of what's going on but i am very very curious as to what you i'm going to for once in my life shut my trap i am extremely curious as to how what you think is going on here well okay i don't know if i'm i'm making up my own like you know fan canon but Alex struck me as like a philosophy major. I Obviously, is, yeah. the cave is like a Plato thing. And welcome to the beginning and end of all that I have retained from philosophy class. Um, it's not fair. There's the one about the guy in the journal. Horton, here's a who. <laughs> So um, not not just the uh, not just the the allegory of the cave, right? But why are we here right now? And why are there suddenly exits when there weren't before? Yeah, yeah, no. We we talked about um sort of the difference between much older styles of parser IF. It has been a long while since I have seen an exits list. Um, I'm going to take a grounding moment and X self. You take a moment to focus. You point your attention inward. The flower of your Atman opens itself to you. You remember now. Your name is Natalie. Ryan, have you played Endless Nameless? Yeah. 
You very, very much should. Um, <laughs> I feel like you specifically would very much enjoy it. It takes a little while to crack, but when it hits you, oh boy, it hit different. Okay. X. So an engine screeches to life and breaks your concentration. There are people in here talking over the fans, walking around like they own the place. They're getting into their cars and they're leaving. Why are they leaving? Where? Why? Okay, X cars. You're surrounded by hundreds of cars, purring and growling, their eyes flashing. Mere nuisances. You won't th let them get you. X people. Solemn looks on the faces filing past. Disappointment. Cynicism. You can't stand it. Uh, it's si signatures. The concrete walls bear many glyphs and insignia. The tripod, the cross diamond, dried out, legalita. Inevitably, authority will power wash these away. Inevitably, the artist will return and reclaim their canvas. The dimness and the white noise were so relaxing, but now everybody's piling into their loud, stupid cars. It's impossible to think in here. Listen, people are talking and talking and talking and starting their cars and you can hardly hear the fans. Your head is starting to hurt. Sure has been hurting a lot this game, huh? The fans are giant machines at the end of the ramp, churning incessantly. The constant low moan is perfect thinking music. Okay. Fi finally have run out of nouns. Um, I, I guess east? Frack. Cheatery? Oh, the cross diamond. Oh. Okay. Oh, the, uh, the symbols are examinable. Yes, yes, yes. I can do that. Um. No. Uh, hmm. So I'll go back to there, but in a matter of seconds, you are soaked. Your clothes cling to you like someone else's moist hands. And tingles of intense sensation ripple over your skin. You are supremely, ecstatically aware of your own hot, wet body. But everyone's in a hurry, hurry, hurry to get inside the parking ramp. What for? It's just water, you guys. People are idiots. Exits. West and east. Some sort of creature is shivering in an alcove, trying to keep dry. Okay, I will come back to that creature. Uh, X the cross. Heretical alchemists use the cross diamond to represent the process of catal catalysis. Catalysis, I think. Catalysis. The hastening of the great work. Great, great work. Resting. Uh, X tripod. The three-legged sigil fills you with foreboding, but you'll power through it. <laughs> Try it out. A base signature of no significance. La Galetta is the calligraphy is gorgeous to the point of illegibility. Focusing again is on its curvaceousness. Your mind goes blank for a long moment. <laughs> uh, as not to get too smug about it, as somebody who does know what's going on here, this is just delightful. Like, this is extremely accurate to the thing that it is representing, I think. Um, let's head back east and uh, check out that creature. Yeah. Ha happily of one mind here. The creature has a face you recognize. He sees someone he knows and waves. 
He keeps waving and beckoning, more and more insistently, calling out something you can't hear over the rain. Oh, he's waving at you. Something is making it hard to hear things. Something you don't want to acknowledge. Um... Oh. Talk to the creature or head east. Yeah. Uh, touch the plastic baggie. You reach out and feel the plastic baggie. Whether the plastic baggie likes it or not, the plastic baggie isn't in charge today. Plastic baggie? I'm carrying a plastic baggie? Inside the plastic baggie are seven little yellow pills. Um, op open ba baggie? Baggie needs to say shut or baggie spills out all for everything and then you get mad. This is one of those times where I'm really glad I don't have a face cam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Okay. Talk to creature. Okay, you skip through the puddles to join the creature in its damp alcove. I've been looking all over for you, he says. I have orders to deliver you back to headquarters. Oh, okay. Yeah, the weather is gorgeous. It's amazing. You slick your hair back. Don't you love it? What are you talking about? He's not paying attention. The rain. Oh, I guess I would like it better if I was indoors and wearing dry socks. Of course he would. Of course you would. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, why is everybody leaving? Yeah, why is everybody leaving? I thought this was supposed to be fun times. Well, it's raining pretty hard. It's not raining that hard. He rubs his forehead. He's thinking about something. He's about to say something. He says, well, yes it is. Ugh, it's so stupid. So, who is this guy? You lean in to inspect the candy-colored clown. He leans back. You know him from somewhere. A long time ago. He seemed kind of gross when you met him. And he hasn't done anything to change your opinion since. Just because you're both aspects of the same universal consciousness doesn't mean you have to like him. Words. What are you even here for? I just said, Hino wants you to come back. They had a quick meeting while you were off doing whatever you were doing. You weren't even doing anything. They had a meeting without me? What exactly did they decide behind my back? Alex starts to talk, then he stops himself. Then he gives you a big fake smile. You should probably hear it straight from Hina. Nobody tells me anything, you know. They tell you more than they tell me. He scoffs. All they tell me is to tell you that they have something to tell you. You wince. This is giving you a headache. I don't want to have to put up with this. No, I, yeah. I want to put up with more of this. And I won't. What? I won't go along with you. I won't comply with your orders. The monomyth says I have to refuse the call. He sighs. 
Okay, I'll go back and let them know that you're invoking the monomyth. See you later. <laughs> he hops out of his hidey hole and runs as fast as he can down the street. Well, that's over. As I have thought to myself after pretty much every human interaction I've had in the last two and a half years. <laughs> y uh, yes. Oh, all right. You know what? X water. Rain is pounding against everything, slamming like rubber bullets into your skin. It's exhilarating. Yeah, X everybody. You're not currently seeing everybody. Fair enough. Um, uh, it would be okay. tough. I guess we head east then, huh? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, the beast, the deluge, the beast. Oh, okay. He growls and curses and struggles mightily against his fetters, but it's hopeless. He cannot move. He will never escape. Bound so tightly with tension and anger, he approaches the state of rigor mortis. Um, ex beast. A fanged monster of prodigious size is shackled in the middle of the street, his body melting away in the rain. He is glorious. Be gone from me, the beast growls, or I shall chomp thine head off, for I detest thee and all of mankind. D I mean, Dang. vibes. How can he detest me? He doesn't even know me. I love how... um examining it automatically entered you into the dialogue tree. That's so slick. Yeah, that's real slick. Like, ju just from also, like, uh, gameplay mechanism, that's slick. Uh, I, I talk a lot, I talked a lot about this when we were doing Immortality uh, a few weeks back, where, like, I, my favorite kind of media is that kind like that makes you feel a bit off balance right that makes you feel like you can't quite trust exactly what you're seeing that's seeing that subverts like the expectations of well i reach out my hand and touch the apple wow it's furry mm -hmm. or i'm just looking at this beast whoa i'm talking to it oh, okay um yeah, yeah. No, and to, to sort of use that as like, is especially knowing like, okay, what what do what do players do? They look at something to figure out what to do with it, and you can short circuit that and go, okay, well, like, what I want you to do is talk to it, but. You're going to look at it first anyway. So, fine. That puts you into a dialogue tree. I, I find that really, really interesting. Short-circuiting is exactly the word, I think. Um, and it's the kind of thing that only is possible to beat a, like to keep beating this drum in a very limited text-based medium, such as purse or interactive fiction. How would something like this look in a AAA? You literally couldn't do it. But because we're working in text here, there you can pull some rhetorical tricks that, again, would not be possible graphically. Yeah, yeah. You don't really detest me, though, right? 
I only know thee to be human. The beast explains, it was by human hands that I was given this abhorrent form. It is the human's will that I must endure these agonies. <laughs> All of these are very, very good options. Um, yeah, no, that... I don't think you're that abhorrent. I'm glad, yes, that that's... I think your form is fantastic. The beast blushes. It's not my fault that people are awful. Well, I had nothing to do with any of this. You say, that's a lie. You had plenty to do with this. But I will reach out to those who did this to you. I will cause them to understand their stupidity. Thou must punish them. The beast rides and gnashes. No. I will illuminate them. He howls in protest, but what's he going to do about it? He can't even move. Why is he tied up like that? Who exactly put these chains on you? My creators, human college students. After they sculpted me into being, they saw that I was too powerful and that I would usurp and consume them. They enshackled me thus, and then they fled. Cowards. You nod. Total cowards. Total cowards, dude. Why is he melting? You run your hand down the beast's back. He's hard and grainy. He's made out of sand. Sand is the highest form of sculpture, the truest test of artistic skill. It's doomed to destruction. Therefore, it's the loveliest of substances. For endurance is ugliness, and transience is beauty. Stop touching me, the beast barks. But you go on petting him. He loves it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I was told that a thing of beauty is a joy forever. <laughs> You mean to tell me that transience is beauty? <laughs> Poor thing. You kneel down and scratch between his ears. Is there anything I can do for you, big guy? The beast softens. No human has ever before shown me one mote of kindness. No, Natalie. It is too late for me. I am doomed to return to elemental matter, to cease in my distinctness forevermore. But in thanks for thine tender attentions, I will spare thine life. Ah, thanks, big guy. You rise from your knees. Thunder rumbles. I do... Okay... He still growls and curses and still struggles mightily against his fetters, but it's hopeless. He cannot move. He will never escape. Bound so tightly with tension and anger, he continues to approach the state of rigor mortis. Uh, X fetters. Hot, wet rivulets pin the beast to the pavement. But aren't you shackled too in your own way? Everyone is. It's the human condition. Head north? Yeah, I... I, I guess. Unlock beast? No, definitely not with the with the plastic baggie. Release beast? Okay. Hitting the hitting the edge <laughs> of, the, of the parser there. Throw baggie into beast's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah, I... I'm scratching my head with this with this baggie. 
It's almost like it's probably really important. Yeah, let's go north. A massive castle looms before you, its walls and towers barring further progress. How original. <laughs> yeah, let's check out that baggie again. Uh oh. What? Scrolling, scrolling. If only I could remember when I last did it. Uh, I believe your recollections are correct. I believe it said specifically six little yellow pills. Yeah, and the first seven, time I me. looked at it was seven. Okay. The castle is a magnificent and well-crafted structure, is the fortress, with many intriguing details. In his lair at the top of the tallest tower, the wizard looks over the rest of the fortress and records all that he sees. Ah, uh, you can't see me right now, but I'm 100% throwing up the horns. <laughs> the wizard? Um... Okay. Fine. Don't let me drop the baggie. You're not just leaving that here. Did we check the walls and towers? Um, no. X walls. X. Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I... <laughs> I skimmed over that. So the first sentence is the same, but there are many intriguing details. The messengers of the Northwest Tower bear missives and watery cordials to all various inhabitants of the fortress. The earthy poets of the Northeast Tower are dedicated to beauty, to love, and to heartache. <laughs> right and so this is where it goes into the final level of breath of the wild uh we're in ganondorf's castle now oh uh, okay well we have our choice of towers oh okay wizard tower wizard tower wizard tower wizard tower <laughs> X Wizard Tower. Is there an orb? In his lair at the top of the tallest tower, the wizard looks over the rest of the fortress and records all that he sees. Okay, so we we've got the five towers. So we already did northeast. We already did northwest. X Southeast Tower. The administrators of the Southeast Tower maintain the castle's bureaucracy with fiery drive and single minded professionalism. The artists of the Southwest Tower spend their days asleep, but by night they gaze into the sky and draw celestial inspiration from their airy visions. Okay, well, can we just enter the castle? The fortress is much too small for you to step inside, and when you make the attempt, you end up stepping on the herb garden and destroying it. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. 
Can't take me anywhere. Okay. Um, let's try to X that garden. I, I did. It doesn't exist anymore. We we squished it. Oh. Rip. F in the um, chat for the, gar the herb garden, people. Although a main part of it is in ruins. What about the ruins? Okay. The main... But it's... It's too small for us to step inside and we can just step on it. Jump over fortress? Well, fine. I'll just jump. You leap into the air and for an infinite instant, you're weightless. Dance, cry... Shout. So, I I'll rules then. <laughs> Eat gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> um. Smash, um. Smash castle. Like if we're big, and it's little. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Like it's not gonna lock us out. Oh. Like. You stomp on the southeast tower, reducing it to a pile of sand. Oh, sick. You bring your fist down on the south wall. It crumbles immediately. You kick the gatehouse, splattering it across the street. Street? Luxurious inches of water ripple across the pavement. You're making splishy, splishy, splishies with every step. You smush the southwest tower into rubble. People passing by seem to think you're doing something wrong. They clearly don't understand how important it is for you to get through this castle. You destroy the flimsy blacksmith shop with a single kick. Um. What? What if I look again? Yes, it is. Yes, the the background music is all uh, various games. It keeps it from uh, Twitch getting too upset at me. Um, okay, the main the main body of the fortress still stands in the way. Dash body. Most of the fortress is still standing. In the stable dwell the castle's horses, as well as a little orphan girl who has no other home and makes just enough money to live oh, from no. the filthy stable work. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Dash the orphan. Oh, I don't wanna. I don't know if this is. Okay, Smash Castle. You rip out a big chunk of the east wall and toss it down the road. You uh, all of the... the... Oh, sorry. You push the stables into the ground. Now it's just wet sand. Of all the different permutations of type of game that this has... Um taken so far, which is the straightforward text adventure to semi-dating sim. Kaiju Simulator was not one that I had on the old bingo card. <laughs> Rip. <sighs> oh man, one, one of my favorite channels is just running a bunch of uh, Godzilla movies all weekend. And it was absolutely glorious. Did not know that there was a 90s Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Absolutely worth it. Oh, dude, it's so good. Did you not have the sci-fi channel growing up? I did. 
I don't I don't watch movies with commercials. Eh, fair. And let and take that back unless it's a Godfather, which is the only way I've ever seen the Godfather because I am a Philistine. <laughs> that is maybe the most Jersey thing you have ever said. All right. You've pummeled the wizard's tower into dust. At last, you've cleared a path through to the rest of the street. Why, why are we? Most of the castle is destroyed and the way north is clear, but a few parts of the fortress still stand. Parts of the castle are still intact. The north wall looks out over the dangerous lands beyond where only seers and madmen travel. Guess let's go north. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize. Yeah, IV. Uh, so the room, the rooms are numbered as well. Yeah, and it started with zero. I'm. Yeah, okay. Liquid fire pours out from the smoking crater down the mountainside towards the doomed village. It's too late to escape, too late to rescue anybody. Everything is melting. Next fire. Fire is bubbling up from the earth. Fire is raining down from the sky, melting everything it touches. All is lost. Oh, but you'll be fine. X crater The volcano rises high. Its plume of smoke blots out the sky. Madame Pele shapes the earth according to her whim, and to erect a settlement in the shadow of her mountain is to put oneself at her mercy. Lightning arcs across the clouds of ash, and thunder makes the pavement shake beneath you. X pavement luxurious inches of water ripple over the pavement making splishy splishy splishies with every step um all right ha have a good rest of your night likes the bacon thanks for stopping by and always a pleasure um X smoke. Nope, still okay. Need my nouns again. Mountainside village. X mountainside. Not currently seeing that. Uh, that's because I can't spell. Okay. Same thing. A few simple homes remain out of the lava's path for now, but before long, the entire village will be a smoking ruin. It's a shame, someone says as they hurry by. All that hard work will be washed away, but that person doesn't understand properly. For eruption doesn't necessarily symbolize a complete disaster, just a drastic change a threat to the status quo and that's often a positive thing actually the status quo is famously terrible so it follows that change <laughs> is always good oh this is so great also oh okay yeah so number one the transition from like very straightforward uh, uh, linear reality to kind of abstract, but at least physically sensible, concrete reality to complete abstraction is delightful. Also, the phrase, the status quo is famously terrible, is going to be rolling around in my head until I die. So, thank you for that. Yeah. Also, they're numbered...
Sorry. Uh, um. <laughs> Speaking of parsing, I, I'm running through all the levels of just numbering these. Yeah, yeah, they're numbered. And yeah, it doesn't necessarily symbolize a complete disaster. As, yeah, as I have a deck of cards next to me that I really should be doing my daily pulls from more often. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, but Which, death is number nine, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't think the numbers. I mean, I'd have to flip through, but I do know that they also start at zero, and it's also tracking how many pills that we've had. Yeah, something about my head hurting. Um. Okay. So the village, the doomed village. It's too late to rescue anybody. Can we get... The... Can we get one of the homes? Are we still giant? Oh, whoops. Get home. Can't take the homes. Okay. All right. It's it's a lost cause. Yeah, okay. And we can go west from here, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. And there's four more. Okay. I think I think we just have to move on from here. Maybe I'm gotten, wrong. I think we've gotten pretty much everything we can out of this room. Papa is sitting seated in majesty on his golden throne, surrounded by a golden cord and a veil of black curtains. Um, okay. Who's Papa? Where has where Papa come from? Papa is dressed in his purple vestments and skull cap, his frilly white s skirt. His pince nez is smashed into his forehead. His tiny teeth shine like wet pebbles in his gaping mouth. He is screaming. Papa's mouth is split wide in a piercing, infinite scream. Hey! You yell loud enough that he should be able to hear you, but he doesn't react. Man, I hate this guy. What's he screaming about? He's not worth your time. Ed. Woof. Okay. Oh my god, this game whips ass. You know what? What's he screaming about? Who cares? You yell at Papa to shut up. You yell at him again. He has no reply except additional screaming. You're ready to start screaming yourself, but that would be stooping to his level. Life is full of little lessons like this if you bother to look for them. You have to pay attention to yourself. You have to open yourself up to what yourself is trying to tell you. Hmm. So what are we trying to tell ourselves? Uh, I, I have my personal opinion, which is that he's not worth your time. And I don't want to even stoop to hating him. It's just GTFO. So he's not worth your time. Exactly. Your authority is meaningless. Authority is a false structure. You've been gnawing on this bone for a while. I don't have to respect you. I don't even have to acknowledge you. Papa screams in response. 
Yeah, look, leave him alone or no, he needs to have this explained to him. Look, apparently the Hierophant, which is Major Arcata number five, represents law and order, and as somebody who has been in the unfortunate position of having to try to explain basic facts of life to an angry, older male authority figure, it's not going to get you very far. Maybe we should just dip? Uh, uh, Pinsnes it's... are like little spectacles. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that I was just about to jump on that too. <laughs> yeah, they're like two... the, the they're like uh, a monocle, but two of them, right? That's just glasses. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> but without the the uh, ear arms, yeah, arms, yes. As I'm like putting my glasses on and off, being like these things that you can see. <laughs> um. Yes. Let's check out them pincemas. Yeah. All right. Leave them alone. They're like the Ebenezer Scrooge glasses that clip onto the the bridge of your nose. Yeah, you have better things to do, but he does need to have this explained to him, and you're the perfect person to explain it. Authority is a social construct, which means we all have to agree that you possess authority or you don't possess it. Papa goes on screaming, either in impotent protest or in feigned confusion. Forget it. You'll never understand. Yeah, he'll never understand. And yeah, there there were a just boatload of things to examine. The throne... The cord, the curtains. His vestments and his pince-nez. Skullcap, vestments. Start. Oh, the, the detail of the tiny, the shiny, tiny teeth. So good. I'm getting the mental image of, um, this is going to be a bit of a deep pull, but the cell with uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. It's a terrible movie, but oh, very, no, very pretty. no, I love the cell. Get out oh. of here. Oh, it's very bad, but very pretty. I, yeah, that... I don't need quality. This scene is Francis Bacon's study after Velasquez... Velasquez's oh, portrait of Pope hell. Innocent X. The pince-nez comes from an image in the film, the battleship Potemkin, that Bacon was obsessed with. Oh yes, in this house we stand a Francis Bacon name drop. Thank you. What? <laughs> Yo, when the unnamed IF book club meets uh, about this game in a week, which sidebar is why we're doing this, I am one hundred percent going to come prepared with uh, a couple of a couple of slides from. Uh, Francis Bacon, and also The Cell, just to see if there are any aesthetic connections. <laughs> I bet you anything there are. Okay. I would, all, I would argue complication. <laughs> complication is not a bad thing. Um, I will, again, repeat this phrase into, until my death. The piece of art that rewards attention is the kind of the best piece of art. Yeah, no, I'm just... <laughs> you know, I've, I've run into this a couple of times with, like, uh, some older IF, too. That, like, it rewards walking away and coming back to it, like, a day or two later. Or in, like, extremely puzzly IF, like, a week or two later. Um, it's been, <laughs> it's always interesting when like something rewards coming back to it and it's not been like mentally taxing from a, uh, oh, you have to be thinking extremely, uh, t uh, laterally. Exactly to get there it's just like 
Oh my gosh. Okay. It's it's taxing in the the bo- both rewarding ways, but taxing in in a narratively interesting and okay. Let's shift by tangents. Um yeah. I I have lost the ability to make words. Sorry. <laughs> Much like our protagonist here. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. What do we have? We have the vestments. We have uh, the yeah. vestments, skull cap, skirt. Excellent. Papa's skirt is melting in the rain, flowing out into the street, getting all over your shoes. Okay. Did we try to ex Papa? Uh, yes. That's how we got that. Uh, oh, right. Line. Papa's cape, or whatever it is, is surmounted by a high collar that looks like it's about to slice off his head. Okay. Uh, skull cap. (laughs) What a goofy little hat. Uh Uh-huh. So, throne cord curtains. And I have a plan. So Is it a cutting plan? Throw no, no. This scene in particular has broken me. <laughs> I, I'm just rolling with it. The throne is the regal seat is topped with elaborate golden pinnacles, reaching almost as high as Papa's hat. The velvet rope of gold is a false barrier. The rules don't apply to you. You aren't responsible for your actions. Uh Uh-huh. The curtain, black drapery, falls all around, obscuring the distant world and bringing what is near into ghastly clarity. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, that's the name of the show. JRM, can I ask something? By all means. What if I pull this cord? Ooh, hell yeah, baby. Pull that cord. Well, being a false barrier, a mere invention, the cord only exists in your mind. So you really can't do anything with it. Think really hard at the cord. Um, okay. I feel like that was worth a shot, though. <laughs> no, I mean, it was worth a shot. It got a unique answer. Um. Pull curtains. You give the veil of black curtains a playful shove. Okay. Uh... Draw curtains. That's a great idea. Where's a pen? You don't have a pen. We had chalk a while ago. Ah, uh, cute. Okay. I think we have exhausted this room. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think. So light plays strangely on the broken planks and spars littering the ocean floor. The shattered hull is rotting all around you. At your feet, a skeletal sailor grins idiotically in a siren's embrace. (sighs) Okay. Okay. So let's look at the hull. What brought this Hulk to rest here? What doomed this sailor? Was it the mermaid? Probably. Is that a sexist assumption? Oh, fuck. 
the planks, pointy bits of wreckage are all over the place, spoiling the desert-like smoothness of the ocean floor. The ability to sort of interject um, a bit of a punchline, like a bit of a needle in the balloon that is your scene, with like the sly humorous aside, is something that I really fucking appreciate when I have. Okay. Planks, spars. The flotsam and jetsam. I want to check out that skellington. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting. Skellington? Okay. Uh, do we want the skeleton or the siren first? What are you thinking? Uh, skeleton. All right. The sailor is smiling, even as his bones erode in the warm ocean currents. A slimy tentacle is wrapped around one of his legs. This moron is so, so pleased that a girl is finally paying attention to him. He doesn't even care that he's dead. Um, oh, okay. Let's look at the siren, I guess. A curvaceous mermaid, long of hair, smooth of cheek, pert of nose. Her eyes are cast down lovingly at her skeleton friend, and her serpentine tail is coiled into a pillow where he can rest his skull. The siren's pet shark is lurking nearby, ready to attack any intruders. Okay. First things first, tentacles. Twisted around the sailor's bony leg is a tentacle, reaching up from somewhere beneath the sea floor. It's disgusting. Shake hands with tentacle. Okay, now. That's fair. Um, feel currents. Okay. And then we have the curvaceous mermaid. Her eyes are cast down. We have a tail. Let's look at this tail. Okay, that's it. Let's look at this shark. A dog-sized shark is skirting the area, looking out for trespassers. But it hasn't noticed you. Pet shark. You give the shark a little pet. It's not soft or fluffy. It's wet and gritty. Uh, counterpoint, sharks are smooth. No, they're not. Their skin's like sandpaper. They're smooth. Uh, n n no. Well, yes, Her yes. The 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 actual, it is actually made of sand. I, I, I am. Have, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have pet plenty of nurse sharks at at, you know. Frankly, kids' aquariums, my favorite kind of aquarium. No, but the sharks are definitely smooth, though. Uh, I, I'm making a joke. Um, <laughs> your your friend and mine, uh, Branson Reese, host of uh, Root Tales of Magic, got into a very long and involved Twitter <laughs> argument about this exact thing, uh, where the joke <laughs> is, no, sharks are smooth. But people got very mad about it, which is kind of just Twitter in a nutshell, actually. Yeah, that that sounds that sounds like a very good day for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that reminds me, there's probably a new season of Swan Boy. Um, okay. Can can I can I get the shark? <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> I, I will have to. 
I want, I want the shark. No, but I want... Put leash on shark. We are in a dreamscape. I am going to manifest the leash. Okay, fine. This is a very good shark. I do feel like I'm missing something by just walking through here. But that's fine. Can we go north? Yes, we can. We can go. Well, yes, we can go north. Uh huh. Okay. So, JRAM, have you been uh, mapping this on your own? Uh, I have not. Um... Huh. Next, next time you play through this, uh, map map these these rooms out. Interesting. The warm rain is gone. Now, frigid air conditioning flows over you, and you shiver like one near death. The vestibule of the honor center is a liminal space, not quite within or without. Nothing good ever happens in liminal spaces. Exit south. Oh, Hina's here. Uh. Number one, um, the appearance of an NPC after the exit sign is like again one of those like subtle little like, oh, something's not quite right here. Number two, nothing good ever happens in liminal spaces is another phrase that will keep rolling around <laughs> in my head forever. So looking at the vestibule, you're inside a sort of glass cube existing between the honor center lobby and the outside world. Ambiguous locations like these give rise to all sorts of other ambiguities and fateful encounters. Right now, for example, Hina is stomping up to you with demonic flames burning in her eyes. Where in the heck have you been? She snarls. Well, you can't tell her you were getting high in the parking ramp. Oh no, she already knows. She does not. Calm down. No, look how angry she is. She definitely knows. She has no idea. Just act normal and she won't be able to tell. I had a better vocabulary in terms of game design and this kind of writing because the idea of the diegetic narrator sassing you, 10 out of 10, hilarious every single time. Yeah, yeah. The dialogue choices being meant to be read in order. As sort of a commentary on your current emotional state, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, I vote five. No, it's fine. It's fine. We're in college. It's fine. It's f It's fine? It's fine. It's fine. She has no idea. I was taking a little break. You were gone for like two hours. Huh. I guess I lost track of time. Very normal response. You're doing great. He and his forehead wrinkled puckers. It's your sand sculpture contest. I would expect you to take some responsibility for it. I took plenty of responsibility for it. That's why I needed a break. Well, while you were taking your break, the rest of the arts committee talked it over, and we don't think we should do sand sculpture again next year. They can't do that. They can't cancel my event without consulting me. Just because it rained? I'll complain to the faculty advisor. What was her name again? Um, yeah, just because it rained? Mm-hmm. You understand that it's not going to rain like this next year, right? It's not about the weather. We all agreed that sand sculpture was too expensive and dangerous. Someone got cut with a shovel pretty bad. You gave up because one guy had an accident? 
No. She steals herself. We also heard from a lot of participants that it was too much work. Shoveling all that sand and pouring all that water is really exhausting. And it's supposed to be fun. A sudden peal of thunder punctuates Hina's treachery. It is fun. These people are just too stupid and lazy to appreciate it. What are they going to do instead? Finger painting? Well, they can do it without me. No, positivity. It is fun. Fun. It's plenty of fun. Your face gets hot. That's not the feedback we got. Screw feedback. People are just sad that it rained. They just want to ruin everything for me. Hina looks at you carefully. She's examining your eyes. Uh-oh. She puts a hand on your shoulder. Natalie, are you feeling okay? She knows she's going to report you. There's still time to deny it. No, just own up to it. Deny, no, deny, deny. Delay and deny. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. I didn't ask you if you were doing anything. She's got you there. Look, I was just taking some of these. Pull out your baggie. Just relax. It's not a big deal, but don't tell anyone. Hina examines the pills. Hey, why are there only two left? Is this Episcopheticidin? You roll your eyes. Nobody calls it that. I'm not I'm gonna intentionally not not examine that uh that drug name at all. Just texting my husband very quickly. <laughs> the outside door of the vestibule opens and Alex blusters in. Hey Hina. He says cheerily, look, I found Natalie. Uh, I do not believe that's, yeah. I mean, Episco has to do with bishops. So, of course. Um, yeah. You're, please press any key to continue. Your rate for destroying artwork is 31.05%. Yeah, I knew there was more I could do there. That's okay. I'll take a 31%. That's a gentleman's C. Yes, okay. Oh, man. I knew we could have gotten all the Chivos. Guess we're going to need to redo this on the stream. I, s I just found out about the Club Wooby missions. I'm sorry, what? Uh, Ryan has uh, achievements for his games where you get buttons. What? I, I will... I literally just found this when I was doing, like, the extremely minuscule amount of research that I do. Clayab. Uh... Yes. Uh... Do, do, do. All right, we are in. Mm, okay, I'm just serious, seeing thorns and really wishing that uh, my Welsh buddy was online right now to correct all of my pronunciation. That is fine. In Eternal's winter's grasp rests icy Sjaldheim where was raised snow-heavy Byringsburg. 
throne of Kareth. Bearer of the pallid crown, long has Kareth reigned in peace. Long have his enemies waited to rise up and w war against him. Episcopatus Sedan, commonly known as Joan or Klazvac, citation needed, is a psychoactive drug primarily used for recreational purposes. Its effects include altered perceptions and sensory hallucinations, often accompanied by intense changes in mood, such as euphoria, depression, or paranoia. Fun. I, okay. <laughs> and again, this is where I have the privilege of being able to envision my co-host absolutely losing his shit right now. <sighs> okay. We just do the numeral one, two, or three. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not sure which one I want to go down. This is why I don't do Wikipedia holes that well, because I just end up opening like 50 tabs. And then, yeah, my Wikipedia diving stops at one level. Um, okay. Let's start with paranoia. That's not That's not a verb I recognize. Oh, maybe it's the bolded things. Plazvac. Mm. Okay. Or we can just look again. Oh no! Well, we can look again. Could you scroll back up real quick? I know yeah. that we got Bearer of the Pallid Crown earlier, but did we get Long Has Kareth Reigned in Peace? earlier yes okay cool okay so what's new down here um episco facetan is usually consumed orally in tablet form shocker it, it is also dissolved in water to counteract its dehydrating properties however continued ingestion of episco facetan laced water has shown to increase the likelihood of syncope, fainting, hyp hyponatremia, and other possibly life-threatening side effects. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Yeah, again, um, let me reiterate, please play Endless Nameless by Adam Kadra, if you hadn't. Yeah, I think we're going to have to uh, move that one up the list. You, you, while you were playing it the first time, were just like losing it at me about it. Yeah, it was a lazy Saturday and I was slacking my co-host all day being like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Although it lacks the electrolytes necessary to restore sodium concentration, drinking unadulterated water has been shown to reduce the hallucinogenic effects of episcopacetin, as well as treat dehydration. Citation needed. <laughs> yeah, commitment to the bit. I think is a very good way to freeze uh, this game as a whole, and especially this section. Long have his enemies waited to rise up in war against him. Your head hurts. Episcopacetin is a chiral compound and is produced as a racemic mixture. Differences in kinetics have been noted between the two enantiomers with the R enantiomer having a shorter elimination half-life and a greater excretion than the S enantiomer. Your face is sore. Screenshot this real quick and text it to my husband, who, for the record, like is a medical professional. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get some commentary on this. 
Yeah, see see what his uh, rating of the the techno babble is. The one of my defining moments in both liking and being able to like turn my brain off with sci-fi was out of nowhere we're watching Star Trek and he looks at me and goes do you know what it means to reverse polarity on a like electrical current like no not really and he sits me down and draws out all the sine waves and does the whole thing and I look at it and I'm like that wouldn't do anything and he's like yeah it doesn't do anything just enjoy the dumb show. <laughs> Is that a story about Randall? No, no, that that's a story about my brother. Right, of course. Sorry. Um, yeah, that sounds pretty accurate both to your brother and my husband. Like, which is why they're delightful guys. Anyway. Um, okay, our face is sore. God, bouncing back and forth. There are several methods for synthesizing a pescophacidin via various intermediates. The original synthesis described by Hamano involves brominating caridol to dimethyl primidol primidid, primidinol by sulfate and then reacting this adduct with trimethylamine. I don't think this section is going to be one that I mined for clips. Little did you know that you were, uh, Ryan, you were creating the perfect poison for future streamers. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So how long does this keep going then? Episcopacidin is known to be metabolized by two main meta metabolic pathways. O dimethylation followed by catechol O methyl transferase, COMT catalyzed methylation, and or Oh <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, it's a very good joke. Like pushing your player toward the action that you want them to take by giving them longer and longer and progressively less sensical streams of techno babble is such a good tactic. I mean um what was that game that we that we played? You played the second half of it with me. Uh Oh my gosh. I really need a, a list up of games that I have played, like, cross-referenced. Um, the one where we were in the, like, very bureaucratic hell. Oh, right. Um, Perdition's something or other. Yeah, Perdition's Flames. And you... I remember, because you, you played the first half of it to sort of catch up. Um, and I remember you, you saying that you did the same thing that I did, which was sit in one of the rooms with like a really long, uh, random text just to see what all of it was. Uh, yeah, I am going to be that player 100% of the time. And I love when devs do this. Like I love when the joke is you're going to have to sit here and listen to this pointless text, but I'm going to sit there and listen to that pointless text. I'm savvy enough to know that it's not going to give me, you know, a uh, grip toward getting to the next stage of whatever I'm supposed to be doing, but somebody put effort into this and it's also pretty funny. Nice. But maybe we, <laughs> but maybe we should go to the next room though. Yeah, and to to that point, you need to find a way out of here. Oh, but it keeps going. That's all you can remember. That's very good. 
And then that's it. Okay. So finding a way out of here. Okay. The sword right of Bride Blade and Guild Reke. In the snow lapped valley, Milkus dwelt. Delderay, she was known by men, well thought of by war makers. Affleck raised this trying stone when Rorcus was crown bearer. Beneath the trying stone was Affleck crushed when Rorcus was by Nagol slain. Six of the directions permitted in Sialdheim northeast, east, Southeast, southwest, west, and northwest are these, and no others. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Maze time. East, east. Um. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. 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 Just scrounging for another piece of note paper. Good thing I haven't updated my uh, joke a day calendar in like four days. Ooh, okay. what's today's joke? I don't even, what is today? Why didn't the mother go? Why did the mother ghost give her child the time out? Tell me, tell me. He just wouldn't behave. Uh. <laughs> um, okay. So we have a maze. Northeast, east, southeast. I got my east and west backwards. That's fine. Southwest, west, and northwest. Okay. Let's go northeast. In the interest of possibly finishing uh, this tonight, do we actually need to map this maze or... Oh, boy. In that direction lies the dark sea, and beyond that lies utterly unknown. Are you sure you want to keep going? Yes. Then you continue on. Past the shores of Sialdheim, across the sharp toothed sea, over the edge of the world, and then you rise up into the air. You're floating above the icy realm of Sialdheim. You must be very high indeed. You can take in the entire island at a glance. Other lands lie north and east of here, if you remember correctly. Natalie's unsuccessful sand sculpture event took place on August 28th, 2010. Today is August 27th, 2011 might be a little bit loopy, but you're still lucid enough to do basic math. Natalie has been plotting her revenge for 8,647 days. What? Uh-huh. Well, do you want to go north or east? I suppose north? That's like 20 some odd years. Wait, also, are we not Natalie anymore? Oh, we're Jonathan now. Yes, we are. Yeah, okay, do you want to go north or east? Uh, let's go north. Okay. I'm going to bet that that brings us to Rachel. Okay, and Rachel had the... Ron oh. Paul 2012. No! <laughs> yeah, let's go north. Let's go north. <laughs> Coils of Ahigu, step no further, Hina sh sh Shiro Iwa. You have reached the end of your journey. 
You have wandered into a domain where I alone hold sway. I, the world serpent Ahigu, behold my vastness. Here there is no earth, nor sky, only the infinite twisting of my scaled body. No tail have I, nor arms, nor legs. But look upon my face, my deadly fangs, upon the venom that will be your death. No, not yet. I will allow you to live. But you will not continue east into the Hall of Judgment. Turn back, go southwards, and reflect upon your deplorable failure. Oh my god, sorry, I'm still laughing. <laughs> what incredible punchline. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to listen to the the uh the, uh, the serpent and go south because yes, I want to I want to talk to the flowers if nothing else. Or should be east of Jonathan, right? Yes, so we should go south and then east. <laughs> Oops. Your legs feel so heavy, but you have to keep going. Your path seems to stretch out longer and longer with each step. The trail ahead twists and sur swerves, rolling up and down over sinuous hills, until you finally reach a spindly fence of wrought iron and a crooked stone gate and a tall man spreading wide his spider-like arms. Greetings, greetings! I'm so pleased that you have joined us, but I should introduce myself. My name is Jack. I have the honor of serving as our little Berg's represent representative, a cultural ambassador of sorts. And who might you be, my dear girl? It's nice to meet you, Jack. You say without thinking. You're too tired to think. I'm Hina. He takes you by the hand and leads you through the gateway. Well then, Hina, let me welcome you to Halloween Town. Oh boy. A yellow moon hangs low over the pumpkin fields and graveyard. The denizens of Halloween Town are out in force, cavorting through the streets and across the countryside, toothy grins on every face. The little witch girl, Shock, is scurrying through the cemetery, searching for her friends. A one-eyed mummy is chasing her friend up and down the street. A tiny devil thing is toddling around on its stilt-like wingtips, apparently engaged in a game of tag. The twisting road that skirts the city limits runs east and west. Please... Stay and have a look around, says Jack. We so rarely have visitors. <laughs> um, okay. So let's just check. Uh, can we move freely? Or do we need to solve a puzzle before we can get to the east? We can move freely. Okay. Well, shit, let's hang around here for a minute then. <laughs> um. Oh. Yeah, I mean... There's plenty so, here. So this is a, a genuine question. Uh, I, with the risk of sending I'm looking for spoilers, like are there sub quests in here to complete? Or are we just sort of like looking around and poking at these uh, different psycho landscapes? Let's let's find out. Colors flow and mingle, turquoise into lavender, pale cream into indigo. Rolling in fat raindrops down from liquefying petals, drenching the soil, impregnating the dark earth, the deep blackness of the earth. The maiden and her knight lie sinking into melting lilies. To the south and west are other spaces. We can definitely think of some things. What in a tangle of clinging arms lie the maiden and her knight. Together they shed tears enough to dissolve a universe of flowers. The shared sorrow that afflicts their coupled hearts is unknowable, innominable. It's none of your business. The maiden's eyes are shut by sleeping draft. Her neck and cheek are chill and pale as ice. Her dark lips part in silent choking sobs. 
Her emerald gown and black curling hair have melted with her lush array of flowers into a rippling sea of cover. <laughs> I can absolutely imagine that. Hell, yeah. <laughs> you named so many things. <laughs> um, okay. Curious. So, have we assumed the persona of Hina right now? Yes, like, we're Hina. Okay. Did we do that when we crossed the border into the north um, with uh, Valerie? Victoria. Um, we did that, I think, when we left. So, Ice World. I actually. Ice World. No, I think we did that when we got to the Wikipedia section. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because that, that would make sense that... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, there's a section marker. Okay. Interesting. The Maiden's Mausoleum is her pool of white lilies, ringed with currents running ochre and turquoise. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. All you can do is work with the material that was given to you. <laughs> um, can we take a lily? Sure. You reach out for pale cream and get distracted by your hands. The knight is clutching his maiden. The knight's left hand is clutching something else. Left hand? You know, we didn't do one thing. What do we look like? You try to focus. Your head is killing you, and your face is sore from dragging it across the kingdom of Sialdheim. Before that, you were in charge of a sidewalk chalk tournament, but it hasn't turned out very well. Different response if we try to Zizzy again? No. <laughs> Although it is keeping track of score. All right. Well, let's look at that knight's hand. Or can we try to X something? Um, yeah. Let's, let's really mess with this parser. That isn't here, probably. Or maybe it's here, but it isn't here enough to matter. Or maybe it's here, but that's not what it's called. Yeah. Cute, though. Hey, that's a pretty good, like, not found parser response. I was going to say earlier, um, so before my co-host got the shape of what the game is, the section where you look the signatures and get distracted by the curves of the calligraphy and whatnot instead of looking at the words, I'm like, hmm, I would certainly never admit on air to having done a drug, but that sounds like something that uh, people <laughs> on drugs might do. I don't know. Sounds legit. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... As what do you think someone about that? who keeps up uh, a street art gallery, um, no, I just get lost in street art. It's fine. Um, the colors, ultramarine, tall del delphinium, emblem of good cheer, purity, poison, deceit, undulating over ribbons of coral pink and ochre. Tall delphinium. Okay, X, purity. Okay. Did we try hand? Yeah, so I tried hands, because it said you get distracted by your hands. So I then did X hands, oh. which got us the knight is clutching his maiden. The knight's left hand is clutching something else. But left hand. Yeah. Same thing. Didn't we tried that already? Shoot. Um, hey, <laughs> X maybe Knight? I typed it wrong. Yeah, X Knight. 
I wonder if that's going to give us the same thing. Okay, yeah. The knight has cast off his helm, has collapsed into the waters of his lady's emerald gown. His armor is already smeared with rust. His left hand isn't pressed against his lady's back, but clutched tight around something. Thank you for the hint. Yeah, I would not have assumed that would be manipulable. Um. Yeah, clutch tight, though. You pull at the gauntlet until the knight's fingers open at last. In his palm lies a tarnished key. You grab it. The empty hand now finds the maiden's back and pulls her tighter against the knight. This stubby key operates the faucet at the equipment shed. The water from that faucet probably tastes terrible, but it's not tainted with episcopatacin, and you need to drink as much of it as you can before you pass out. Hmm. The. Okay. So I have a suggestion. Um, hey. Let's... I found the bucket. Hey, there's the bucket you sent Alec off with. Looks like he's had a little accident. Well, nothing to be done about it now. Uh, what is your suggestion? Uh, I feel like we should save here. And okay. we can go we can go poke around and do a bunch of stuff. Um, I would love for you to see the end scene of this before we retire for the night. Not that I'm saying we need to shut it down. By no means. Um, but oh, I would like yeah, a... yeah. I would like a save point here because if we end up triggering the end stage, then we can come back and poke around Halloween Town, which I desperately want to do. Actually, let's go do that right now. Okay. <laughs> what are you um, gonna do? I want to look at the Earth really quick. Drops of color are swallowed into the soil and soak into thick woven roots, twisting through rotten bricks. Yeah. Okay. It's the bricks. Bricks crumble in the grasp of roots and red fragments sink into the wet bones of the earth. In the deep earth lie corpses of nameless monsters, their bones dripping black ichor, straining, staining buried remnants of forgotten eons, artifacts lost when the earth was young. Artifacts? You see a photograph of two people buried in depths beyond the reach of memory. You can't make out their faces in the darkness. You see a necklace, too, glittering in the distant light that glows beneath the lightness, lightless depths. Oh, hell yeah. A colorless jewel is set in the necklace. Get the necklace. The necklace is buried too deep to reach. Dig? Dig in earth. Dig earth. With hands. Okay. No dice. Um, okay. X faces. No light reaches the faces in the photo. X photo. Get photo. The photo is buried too deep to reach. Interesting. Can we look around the room again? Yeah, looking around the room just gives us the same curling flower space. 
Yeah, I definitely feel every every one of these gives us something to play with. Like much deeper than just like a couple nouns. Um so like rain drops. Yeah, it feels it feels to me that like this is kind of the core part of the game, right? Where you're literally or figuratively digging down. Um Do you think we need to do we need to get something else to dig? Maybe. I mean, Can we dig with the helm? Oh yeah, let's get the helm. You reach for the bucket clumsily. Your hand glances against the metal and it rolls away off the edge of space into the depths of the earth. Teach you to listen to me. Uh, hmm. The bucket is gone. You'll have to manage without it. Oh no, they'd be stealing my bucket. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, it just came yeah. out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's kind of what I was what I was feeling with it. Let's go to Halloween town. Oh, shoot. I I got distracted by by succubus. I mean, so say we all. A cloud of yellowish smoke billows over you, stinging your eyes, burning your lungs. You fall to your knees. No, you need to keep going. Get up. Focus. The tall tongues of flame line the passage towards the dais, where Negahina lounges on her thorny ca couch. Hot, dry wind whistles through the narrow windows. Your only hope of escape is returning to the north. You're here, finally, Negahina groans. I've been so freaking bored. Deus, fluidly, but you stumbled on couch. I love you. I can roast you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's X Negahina. Yeah. Her face is your face, down to the furrow in your forehead. And you recognize her body as your body. Stretch out like a cat on her leather couch. She's your exact double. Except for her horns. And her fangs. And her glistening red skin. Well. Your doppelganger's curly horns are round or rough and ridged. But they terminate in nasty points. It seems like she's always smiling, the better to show off her cute little fangs. When she's not smiling, she's licking her lips. Certain aspects may have been embellished somewhat, but that's definitely your body. She even has the birthmark from your right hip. Unlike you, Negahina is almost naked, but that's totally understandable in this heat. Tall tongues of flame line the passage towards the dais where Negahina lounges on her thorny couch. Hot, dry wind whistles through narrow windows. The way back is north. <laughs> now that you think about it, you notice a roaring in your ears that is completely unbearable. So you stop thinking about it. Okay, so we need to go past, ultimately, we need to get water, because water counteracts it. Yeah. Do we have, okay, so if we're, I think if we're in the physical world, we should just be one room west of where the water is, and we should have the key, yes, maybe? No, we've gone the opposite direction. Ah, first. We're as far away from the water as we possibly can be. Oh, great. I, uh, I'm i going to go out on a limb and assume this is not going to be like when we were playing Amnesia and we softlocked ourselves because we were 
trying to make the plot go. We have saved it. We do have a safe state. It is not much earlier than this. I don't want to deal with Negahina until... Until we have checked out Halloween Town and until we know we can get past the uh, the serpent. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, I'm done. I have a feeling we can deal with Nega Hina, but we have to do it before we drink the water. Because if we drink the water, we're not going to be in this space anymore. This is my assumption. I might be thinking too linearly about this, but I'm going to roll with it. Let's go. All right. Halloween Town. What do we want to start with? Oh, my God. All of it? Um, let's try instead of Xing talking. Let's talk to either Jack or the Doctor. Talk to the Doctor. The Doctor grins as you approach. His teeth are awful. Hello there, Jack. And what is this creature you've brought with you? This is Hina. Hina, meet Doctor Finkelstein. It seems wise not to say anything. Finkelstein squints at you through his tiny goggles. You seem to be very much alive, young lady. Not like most of us around here. Still getting use out of all your body parts? Gulp. Uh, yes. Sorry. He clicks his tongue. Well, let me know if anything changes. You laugh nervously as he activates his wheelchair and rolls away. A remarkable mind, says Jack. What else do we have? We have vampires. We have Beryl the trick-or-treater. We have... Countryside. We have streets. We have various denizens. And also a yellow moon. We do have a yellow moon. Let's start with the moon. The moon, pale and waxy, sits in the behind sits in the behind the black tentacle hill at the border of Halloween Town. The coiled up hill, a black spiral silhouetted by the moon, is as emblematic of Halloween Town as Jack Skellington's cheerful skull. <laughs> um... <laughs> Talk to Jack. Okay, talk to Jack. Jack takes a seat on a chip sarcophagus and invites you to join him. Now then, what can your joy guy do for you? Ask him about the town. Let's learn more about him. Tell him what's going on with you. Say goodbye. Be a conversational taker. I, I, I want to know about you. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at, too. Jack seems nice, but would he really care about your problems? What good would it do to burden him with the details of all your troubles? It would be cruel, in fact. It would ruin his week. You breathe a heavy sigh. What's wrong? asks Jack. You try to construct a non-committal answer. I've just been under a lot of stress lately. He nods. He presses his distal phalanges together. Why don't you tell me all about it? All right, fine. But where to begin? Never Let's got see. any background on Hina and Lane's relationship. Yeah, for sure. Uh, tell him about Lane. My friend is in trouble. She fainted. I think somebody put something in her drink. I need to make sure she's okay. Jack slaps his knee. I'm sure you'll be able to help her, Hina. You've given me every reason to believe that you're a very capable young woman. Well, 
That's nice of him to say. So, oh, question, and this is again kind of probing behind the veil a little bit. Is Jack here Rachel herself? Or is Jack like sort of a psychological interpretation of this, this character from he and his POV? This would be Faye. Faye, excuse Rachel. me, sorry. Only because I have all my notes in front of me. <laughs> um Hmm. Of which I, I find it fascinating that, like, while I've been, <laughs> the, this is a lot of notes for, but not, like, the kind of notes that I typically take for text adventures. Um, Like, I typically don't need a persona dramatis. You know, I, I find it interesting, like, that the type of notes. I'm not wording this particularly well, but, um, you know, it, it's such a different thing for such a relatively small play area. Yeah, it, it's less logistical and more like persona based, you know, cont contextual based. Yeah, it kind, of, it kind of reminds me of, uh, and I, I wish I could have played more of it. I'm absolutely going to download a different version. Um, but when I played uh, Titanic Adventure Out of Time, like I thought it would be a really crunchy kind of map-based thing, and it definitely wasn't. And it was more about like, all right, who's this person? What are the things that I need to figure out? Um, just very interesting in that way. I'm going to save that conversation for another time. Would this happen to be based on the James Cameron movie or? No, no, there, there's actually a really good, uh, I think it's digital antiquarian article about it, but it basically, um, I played it for FMV Friday thinking that it was FMV. It is in that weird space of like digitized people doing pre-recorded voices, but it's not exactly FMV. Uh, so like uh, Oregon Trail too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but even more animated than that. Like uh, it is it is an interesting art style for sure. But um, all I will say is don't use whatever version is on Steam. Do not pay the $4 for that because uh, it is not in any way stable. Hmm. Um, this is why among the reasons why I've learned how to use DOSBox. Um, but okay, we, we told them about Lane. Let's tell them about Alec. This is yeah. definitely like a moment for us to. Is like, Alec. Yeah, get get kind of vibe, like exactly what you were saying, kind of vibe check with Hina. I found my friend Alec, and he's in pretty bad shape. You describe the scene to Jack, and he strokes his mandible thoughtfully. You say his girlfriend is there too? I don't know if she's his girlfriend exactly. They can't seem to make up their minds. Then I predict that this will be a valuable bonding experience for the two of them. Jack concludes. Hmm. Okay. What about Natalie? There's this girl, Natalie. She was in charge of our arts event last year, and it was, uh, well, it went very poorly. So this year, I ended up organizing the event instead of her. And I guess she took it personally because she sabotaged the whole thing. Jack's skull twists into a furious scowl. How dare she treat my friend so shamefully? She must be punished, Tina. Well, I don't know if I have the authority to punish anyone. He leaps to his feet and points a long bony finger down at you. This honors arts event is your responsibility. You alone can bring Natalie to justice. Then he sees you cowering in fear beneath him and composes himself. He sits down, 
puts a reassuring arm over your shoulder. But I'm sure you're handle it well, whatever you do. Do we want to tell him about the sidewalk chalk tournament, or do we want to change the subject? Uh, I wouldn't tell him about the tournament. Okay. I worry that this is going to break his mind. Oh, would that be assonance, or would that be alliteration and assonance? You take a deep breath. I volunteered to coordinate the honors art event to begin the fall semester. I thought sidewalk chalk would be fun, right? We'd get to the outside, but it wouldn't be like sand sculpture where everyone was spending all their time shoveling. It'd be totally casual, just a way to decompress. But nobody signed up. I had to beg everyone to come, and then I had to beg Lane and Alec to be judges. The only person who actually volunteered to help was Natalie, and she specifically wanted to be the hydration officer. And I should have guessed that something shady was going on, but I was so busy with the beginning of the semester and everything, I couldn't pay attention to anything. I completely forgot about prizes. I kept calling it a tournament, and I never once thought about prizes. I call it a tournament, but we just have six people actually participating? Then Jonathan tells me that Alec can't be a judge because he has this weird relationship with Jessica. So I have to coach Alec on what scores he's allowed to give. Oh my gosh, if anyone finds out, they'll be so mad. The whole judging system is a complete farce. And then Xavier thinks it's cool to draw... He drew... It's porn, basically, on a public sidewalk. This is the honors program. And then Lane fainted, and I assume she was just dehydrated, which would be bad enough. But everyone else starts going all goofy, and I realize Natalie has made it her mission to ruin the sidewalk chalk tournament. Because it wasn't already ruined enough. And I can't fix anything. There's no coming back from this. I'm a failure. You bury your face in your hands. Jack Skellington wraps his arms around you in an extremely uncomfortable hug. Then he says, in a soft, warm voice, Let me tell you a story. Uh? Let him tell you a story. He takes a deep breath. You must understand, I've been the Pumpkin King for a very, very long time. I've coordinated more Halloween productions than I can count. And if you'll forgive a lapse in modesty, I've gotten very good at it. I grew so tired of Halloween, of the same old thing every year. I wanted to try something different. So I presented my associates with a pitch for a new kind of project, something none of us had ever attempted. Something completely new. Well, not exactly. I more or less copied someone else's idea, but it was new to us, and we were all so excited. We took to it with twice the fervor of our Halloween preparations. We pulled out all the stops. We innovated, really innovated, for the first time in years. And then the night came to us to put it all in action. It was a catastrophe. Our audience wasn't at all prepared for our avant-garde sensibility. And they responded incredibly poorly. Nobody could have predicted the things that could go so horribly wrong. His face falls. That's not true. Sally told me it would be a disaster, and I refused to listen to her. But I don't think even Sally had any idea how bad it would get. They actually shot me out of the sky with a missile. It wasn't until I pulled myself out of the smoking wreckage that I realized how utterly I had failed. I felt just like you're feeling now. Suddenly, I was painfully aware of all the mistakes I had been blind to until that moment. All my hubris. I wanted to crawl into a hole and wither away. But something else occurred to me. I hadn't a withered away quite yet. I was still Jack, the Pumpkin King. And I had something I didn't have before. What was that? Why, my tragic, ruinous, monumental, calamitous failure, Hina. I had experienced failure on a level few could ever hope to recreate. And when I decided to make that disaster a part of me, instead of collapsing beneath it and admitting defeat, I was a new man. I was the Jack Skellington who had been shot out of the sky with a missile. And I was brimming with new ideas, let me tell you. The next Halloween was one for the record books. Of course, 
first I had to clean up the horrible mess I had made. But that became much easier after I accepted and internalized my horrible failure. So, based on my experience, he says at last, I think you're going to come out of this in fine form. You dab at your eyes with your shirt. Do we want anything else in this room? I think we got everything. I mean, there's pl probably plenty more to get. Let me be clear. On barrel and meditate on failure. Yeah, right? Yeah, this is... Uh, so, uh, my co-host is obsessed with failure in games. Um, and... That came out wrong. Um, no, the, no, it didn't. That is very, very accurate. Well, I was trying to avoid saying you're obsessed with failure in general, but the <laughs> idea that a failure state could lead to, you know, something interesting. Maybe not good. Probably not good. Let's be real, but interesting. Um, yeah, I... Well, I... One one of the best things that I've ever watched is uh, is the whole of Venture Brothers, which is like absolutely a meditation on failure. You know, Brilliant. pretty pretty much like uh, I'm struggling to think of like situations where I don't love fictional failure. Real actual failure sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to get like take giant bong rip about it, isn't failure in games just a mechanism to teach us with dealing about failure in life, man? I mean, no, because when I fail in video games, things blow up and it's fun. Well, if things are blowing up in real life, there's at Something. least three or four levels of problems. Something has gone very wrong here. <laughs> um, um, so I, I looked at Beryl. He wears a round skull mask to cover his round, toothy, sunken-eyed face. Um, let's look at these streets real quick. The architecture of Halloween Town consists of treacherous cobblestones, barred windows, perilous balconies, and emaciated gargoyles. Every single building looks like it's about to topple right over. Um, X Tombstone. Not the movie I'm thinking of. I'm not yet. Oh, gun to and it gets us back into talking to Jack Skellington. The hillside oh, nice. is littered with graves, gothic tombstones popping out of the ground at unlikely angles. One of them reads Jack Skellington. Jack whirls around to give you an enormous grin. It's a marvelous community, isn't it? JRAM, do you want to give him your opinion of Halloween Town? I would like nothing better. Well, what opinion will you give? I think the town is deeply creepy. I think it's wonderful. I think it's dreadful, but I'll try to be polite. This is a tough one. Um, in what sense do we mean dreadful here? Do we mean tacky or do we mean terrifying? Uh, let's go with... <laughs> Oh, I'm very torn here. Do you have any opinions? I would say polite. <laughs> I very much got that sense. Right? Well, if he's the emotional core of the game, then, let's tell him that his town sucks shit, and I wish he would go kick rocks. You search for a diplomatic response. 
It's certainly not like any other town I've visited. Aha! A little bit of culture shock, perhaps. I know the feeling. Don't worry, Hina. We're all dedicated to making visitors feel welcome. Take as much time as you need to acclimate yourself. Can I get you anything? A glass of slime? I could really use some fresh, clean water, actually. Oh. He scratches his parietal bone. I don't think we have any of that. What about you? Um... Ask him about the town or learn more about him. Uh, number three. Got it. What would you like to know? His job? Has he always been a ske- I actually deeply want to know if Jack Skellington has always been a Skellington. That is just a personal question of my own. <laughs> Jack, were you ever... I mean, have you always been... Jack leans in with great interest. He has no idea where you're going with this. I mean, that grave, that that's your grave over there, right? You point to the marker with his name on it. No, oh, I suppose it is. So does that mean that you died at some point? I mean, were you ever alive? He frowns. He thinks about it. Not that I recall, no. Any other questions? Why Skellington? <laughs> Why is your name Skellington and, you know, not Skeleton? Jack slaps his knee. What a question. I quite admire your investigative instincts, Hina. It happens that my great-great-grandfather hailed from the village of Skellington, quite some distance from here. He gestures vaguely. Of course, he was a skeleton, too. I'm not sure what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you do around here? So, what do you do when you're not being a cultural ambassador? <laughs> it's my honor to serve as Halloween Town's Pumpkin King. The master of ceremonies at our annual celebration. And during the rest of the year, I'm, well, you might call me a creative director. I'm always developing new ideas. What kind of ideas? <laughs> Why, my dear? He raises his arms theatrically and his skull stretches into a wicked grin. Ideas for how to scare the dickens out of people. Okay. Um. I'm good with Halloween Town. I think we we might have we've talked to Jack quite a bit. You thank Jack for his hospitality. Why think think nothing of it, friend. I only hope that you'll be back again soon. I have a feeling we will. Okay. Just making sure. Oh, interesting. Um, was Sally there before? <laughs> no. Uh, maybe. Sally seems lost in a world of her own. Her big, sad eyes remind you of Faze. The seams holding her arms together are kind of unnerving. Okay, well... Sally doesn't really seem to notice you, but she comes out of her reverie when Jack approaches and gazes up at him adoringly. Jack! She gasps. <laughs> Wonderful news, Sally. We have a guest. Meet Hina. Jack puts his bony hand on your shoulder and pulls you into Sally's line of sight. How, how nice to meet you, Hina. She raises her hand and you shake it gently, worried that you might pull it loose. I feel like we're going to need to look at those uh, seams. Uh, nope. Just gives us more Sally stuff. 
or the same Sally stuff. Um, well, we didn't uh, examine Jack before. He's a dapper ge gentleman in a black suit and tails and black bow tie. Despite his extremely lanky arms and legs, he moves with balletic grace. You can see why Faye likes him. His teeth are a little yellow, yes, and he's a skeleton, but he's a very charming skeleton. There's a wolf man scampering through the pumpkin patch, howling every so often. One particularly noticeable demon has a mouth that goes all the way around his head. Eek. There hmm. is quite a lot here. Yeah, uh, anybody got a suggestion as to what we should uh, poke at next? The wolfman smiles and gives you a wave. Oh. Good grief, that's a lot of teeth. Hmm. I, I want to fight this... this... Uh, this serpent. We're going to have to come back this way anyway. Hmm. Um, yeah, there, there is just, and I really love that, that there's so much in here that's like, um, it's the word I'm looking for that requires that second kind of look. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I've been, like, wildly gesticulating, so where, <laughs> where are my notes here? Okay, West. Right. So, what mission are we on exactly right now? Um, we are, we have the key. We need to figure out how to get water. Worst comes to worst, we can just sit under the, the, uh the faucet and drink straight from it like an animal mm -hmm. but I think if we go that direction we'll find things to the west to the east or to the north uh past the serpent <laughs> and past Trump Paul 2012 which again hilarious Um, I do love that literally anything you do here just <laughs> gives you run ball. All right. Just try, flo try fucking help. flawless. 11 out of 10. If you're new to Ron Paul 2012 and you're having trouble just getting the game to understand Ron Paul 2012 want to do. I think you should check out Ron Paul 2012, which exists online at Spring Thing. If you're having Ron Paul 2012 with something specific to this game, my general advice is Ron Paul 2012. But I really think that what you should do is ask a friend for help because then you're Ron Paul 2012 with your friend. Well, hey, we got that. All right. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to shamelessly look this up real quick. And it goes to 77 verbs, which I will have to check out. Which is a game by Math Rush. Oh, delightful. Oh, neat. I actually might have a very big use for that. 
I've been trying to spread spread the uh, gospel of playing text adventures that are modern to people, and uh, they are often going. I don't know what to do, even with help files. Um, yeah, interesting. All right, north we have the coils of Ahigu. We have reflected upon our deplorable failure. I'm going to go east. I'm just going to ignore him. Fool! I warned you to not go any further. I have no choice. My jaws close around your hand. Yes, the pain is unbearable. You writhe in agony. Ha! But I will show you some small compassion. My venom will only torture you briefly, and then you will have the strength to stand again. See? You still live. You're welcome. Just don't try it again. Threaten me with a good time, motherfucker. Go east. All right. Ah, Hina. I know you are not so stupid as to try that a second time. Turn around and leave. Walk among the monuments to your failure. Do not further test my mercy. Okay. Okay. So we can't... Uh, try it again. (laughs) Nope. Fair. Behold my vastness. You know what? I'm gonna X your vastness. Okay. (laughs) Fair. Um... I'm Ahigu, the endless worm. I am all around you. You can see nothing but my rippling coils, my cavernous maw, my dripping fangs. You know the drill. X coils, X maw, X fangs. Within my jaws is a cathedral of death. Its crimson walls run thick with vicious venom. My gigantic tongue dwells within, winding and curling like a python. You're welcome to take a closer look. (laughs) This must have been so fun to write. My length is measureless. I will unwrap myself enough to show you the that more coils lie beyond, and more coils, unto infinity. There is no escape from Ahigu. But if you go south from here, I will permit you to escape. No fangs. Okay. So I think we need to deal with Nega Nega Hina. Okay. So let's go back south. Let's go back east. Okay. Talk to... Negahina. You take an uncertain step towards the dais. She waves you closer. Don't be shy. We have a lot of work to do. Where are we? Yeah. What is this place? That's an interesting question, actually. We're in two places at once. Physically, this is the end of the sidewalk, where Xavier drew his bodacious drawing. But experientially, we're in... Negahina leans down and whispers, Heck. Are you not able to say hell for some reason? She answers with a pout and a little who even cares shrug. Then an awful thought occurs to you. Are you saying Xavier drew a naked picture of me on the sidewalk? No, no, no. You're just interpreting me in the context of your emotional baggage. Would Xavier know about that birthmark? She juts her hip out at you in an unnecessarily slinky manner. I guess not. All right. Who are you then? Oh, come on. You know exactly who I am. You're just not comfortable with me. Here she uses finger quotes for some reason. 
So you try to get rid of me. But it turns out you you can't get rid of me. And actually, you don't want to get rid of me. You'll be a lot better off when we start working together. Okay. Uh, do we want to give in really quickly, J-Ram? Or do we want to argue with her? Um, I mean, path of least resistance. Okay. You cross your arms. All right, then. What exactly are you planning to contribute? Perspective. Objectivity. While well, you've been working so hard trying to make this sidewalk chalk thing work and feeling so bad about it turning into a fiasco, I've been actually, you know, paying attention. So I can help you figure out what's going on. Oh, nice. Oh, man. Okay. So here is where uh, the guy in the white suit descends into the Matrix and explains everything that's been going on. Yeah. Um, Do you want to start general or specific? Let's start specific. Because I have actually a pretty clear idea of what's going on in general. Coils of Ahigu. Ask about Rachel's artwork. Ask about the kingdom of Sialdheim. Dig. Dig. Ask about Halloween Town. Ask about the curling flower space. Uh, yes. 100%. Ask about Rachel's artwork. Well, what did you think about of Rachel's entry? Well, she did what she was said she was going to do. I guess that's honorable. You get the impression that Negahina does not value honor very highly. Should I have told her that she had to do something else? She throws up her hands. It's your sidewalk chalk thing. Just tell people whatever you want. Yeah, totally. Totally. I think... I think having both is definitely like valuable you know have the option to say that but like and, and this is just sort of a philosophy thing for me like I don't do 100% playthroughs of anything in part because I'm not good at games um, but also I enjoy like especially with with narrative games having that opportunity to be like well if you like this there are probably other paths you can go down <laughs> Um anything else you you want to learn about Jerem uh, make, so making the path available to those who want to dig in and learn every scrap of lore is appreciated for people like me who want to dig in and understand every scrap of lore. But for those who don't, they can just say option six, never mind, and go about their merry way. But thank you for making the option available. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think especially when it does this like narrative thing of like closing the loop. I think yeah. that's that's pretty cool. Um what she says about all Halloween Town and I'm good for I think everything else. Although I will probably go back and poke around on my own. What do you know about Halloween Town and Jack Skellington? Negahina raises a cautionary figure. Finger. I know that guy is way too nice. I don't trust nice people. That's a terrible attitude. Well, you can try going through life associating with nice people and being nice to them in return and see where it gets you. <laughs> Sounds great. Maybe I'll talk to Jack instead of you. Great. Go do that. Fine. I will. 
You stomp out of Negahina's hall. Wait, shit. That wasn't quite what I wanted to do. <laughs> We're back up to the curling flower space. Hmm. You keep stomping past the knight and maiden. Oh, no. Oh, this is one of those routes that's forcing you uh, back into conversation with Jack. Yep. Jack Skellington watches over the scene with his own satisfied smile. Eventually, he notices you're upset. <laughs> What's wrong, Hina? He asks. N nothing. I just kind of lost my cool while talking to someone I know. Just need to clear my head a little. That's very wise. I'm sure that after you've had some time to cool down, you and your friend will be able to patch things up. I wouldn't exactly call her my friend. Jack shrugs and lets the matter drop. We've not dealt with that correctly. Chance to maybe try it again? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know what? Let me ask about the coils. So... There's this gigantic snake guy? Yeah, Ahigu. So freaking cool. Well, he won't let me get to the equipment shed. If I try to get past him, he'll venom me to death. Huh. Negahina strokes her chin. You know, Princess Hebron of Tieldheim, mistress of the fortress Cinebrand, she wears a magic bracelet called Lutorbeg. The Stone Elves made it for her. It's supposed to grant its wearer immunity to poison? How do you remember all this? She shakes her head wearily. Last January, you and Jonathan were in the Honors Center, and he was telling you all about his novel while you were trying to study for an exam. You tried so hard to ignore him, but unfortunately your subconscious mind absorbed every friggin' detail. Did I retain anything for the exam? I don't know. I don't pay attention to that stuff. But if you go back to sealed him and get that bracelet, it might let you get past Ahigu. Well, last time I was there, I couldn't really observe or touch anything. Yeah, because you lacked perspective. You didn't have the context necessary to interpret what you're seeing. That's the value of conversations like these. Okay, so we need to talk to some stone elves. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier about how things in text fiction are possible that are not possible in like traditional graphic video games, right? So like envision you are Link running around the kingdom of um, Sealdian, Cerulea, my apologies. And you don't have the option to interact with the scenery. And then you jump off the edge of the world, but then you come back and how is that signified? that you now have access to different paths than you did before. Is there a glowing stone path like in the rock that you didn't see before? But in text, you can just reorient the entire perspective of the scene in an almost limitless way. Yeah. 100%. So... I should probably get going, actually. Sure, sure. Negahina nods emphatically. And yeah, if you need anything else, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. I'll be here. Right. So... We have to go back down? Tunic the one. Oh, yeah. If you have not checked this out, I, I have only watched people play it, but it is very, very interesting from that kind of like metafictional way. 
Never heard of this. Oh, it looks real cool though. Wish list. Yeah, here. yeah. Like you need the manual. And like that that's a huge part of the gameplay is using the manual. Yes. I just want kids these days to know about Felius. Oh god, not that way. Oh god, that came out <laughs> wrong. <laughs> um You've spent more than enough time down and sealed him, and your face is rubbed raw. Are you sure you want to go back? Yes? See, why not? Okay. Awesome, thank you. Truly appreciated. <laughs> Whoops. Yes, the ring. The Fortress Cinebrand is Hebron's home, fastness of stone, where the wedding was made twixt she and Nagol, the sea sailor, murderer of Mundride. On Hebron's arm rests Hulaturbeg, famed silver ring, by stone elves wrought. She who wears that bracelet fears no poison, nor snake sting, nor spider bite, nor cronwall tongue. Get ring. Gladly does Princess Hebron bestow upon you the beloved bracelet Hlotorbeg and wishes you well in your future endeavors. Wear bracelet. You slip the heavy silver bracelet over your arm. Let's hope this works. Up. Yes. North. Ron Paul 2012. Coils of Ahigu. East. What do you think you're doing? Don't you know what will happen if you disobey my commands? My coils wind tight around you. I sink my fangs into your neck. My venom fills your veins. You will not live to regret this mistake, Hina. No one will learn from your insolence. Your pathetic story ends here. Why are you still alive? The bracelet Hlotorbeg? It can't be! Where? How could you? Oh, f forget it. I know when I'm beat. Just get out of here. In the Hall of Judgment. A few feeble fluorescent lamps illuminate this stretch of the tunnel. Further east and west, the lights are out and the hallway stretches into darkness. Lane's unconscious body is straight stretched out on the dingy tiled floor. This is your fault, she says. Literally, what did I do? Kick Lane. The thought of hurting Lane's unconscious body seems deliriously satisfying to you, but then your breath catches and you burst into tears. You need to focus. Right, okay, east. As you walk by, Lane's body grabs your ankle. Not so fast, Hina. Her voice is really creaky. We need to have a conversation. Lean down to look at her. Her eyes are still closed. I'll be right back. I'll be right back to help you. I just have to... Lane's body digs her fingers into your leg. You'll stay right here, Hina. I think I'm owed some explanations. You wince. Fine. Fine. What do you want me to say? For starters, why didn't you call an ambulance as soon as I fainted? I thought I could handle everything myself. I thought Lane was just dehydrated. It was my responsibility. 
I remember in the opening scene, or not the opening scene, the closing of the first act, when Lane passes out, I was like, ah, God, just like a pre-med major, you know, assuming responsibility when they actually have none. Um, good on you, game, to call me the fuck out. Also, we're back to I statements and uh, specific phrases instead of talk about how I thought I could handle everything myself. Yeah, that's true. Like we're we're having conversation, not directing it. Um, um yeah, we what direction I, you want to go? I think one is my hunch, but open to suggestions. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, let's start with one. I wanted to take care of you on my own. I guess I just needed to feel like I was in control of the situation. In other words, you had to deny me medical attention to soothe your own insecurities? I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> Good. You should be. Gosh, Lane's body is a lot nastier when she's unconscious. Next question. Why on earth did you trust Natalie to be the hydration officer? She deserved a second chance. I didn't think she would retaliate like this. I was desperate. Uh, oh, boy. Two? Like, this seems a little out of line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, we we talked about when we played a uh, choice of magics. We talked about um, how that led itself to role playing in a way that I feel typically parser games don't. Um, this feels very much along those lines like we're allowed to you decide. get to... say that again we're allowed to decide what he know we want to be or what lane we want to be or what alec we want to be yeah yeah like even in like what realms we spend too much time in or like yeah There's no way I could have predicted she would dose everybody. But you knew she was angry at you. You knew she was an unstable nut job. No, I didn't. I don't go through life assuming the worst of people. Well, maybe you should. You squint at Lane's unconscious body. Hold on. Do you represent a part of my personality that's terrible? I'm asking the questions here. Why did you tell Alec to erase Xavier's artwork? What does that have to do with anything? Because you fainted because of the boobs. Hey, I was wondering that from the start, so I would love to hear Hina answer this question. Yeah, um... What does that have to do any with anything? Sure. It's a deflection, but maybe she'll call us out. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Because the other, I mean, the the only other one that makes any sense is because you fainted and I just was like, get out of my face. Mm. What does that have to do with anything? That didn't happen until after you fainted. It speaks to your fitness as a sidewalk chalk event organizer. I don't have to justify myself to you. Xavier's drawing was totally inappropriate for an honor-sponsored event, not to mention inappropriate for public sidewalks in general. It was my call to make, and I did exactly what a good sidewalk chalk event organizer would do. Okay, well, you just did. Just did what? You just justified yourself to me. <laughs> Fine. Do you have any other questions? Lane's face scowls. No, 
You're free to go. You stand up and wipe the dust from the floor off your butt. Bye. Everything is sand. Sand dunes roll over the planet, shimmering in impossible heat. Yellow sand crusts over your sweaty skin. Sand is in your teeth. Sand is in your eyes. You just want to scream. A gleaming pillar of brass juts out of the sand. Andrew Plotkin game? Am I right? I got that reference. The pipe is polished brass. At the top of it is a spigot. On top of the spigot is an empty slot. Somehow, I think... Climb pillar? Little is to be achieved by that. Okay. Um, X slot? There's a square-shaped hole in the top of the spigot. The key goes in there. Put key in hole... You raise the key over its slot. Something slams into your back and you fall on your face in the sand. No, no, not yet. A voice bellows. Natalie, we still have some psychic baggage to unpack. We can't move forward as human beings if you get all sobered up. You roll onto your side to spit up a mouthful of sand. Natalie chuckles and the world shakes. Oh my God, Natalie, you are the worst. Kiss Natalie. You can't even stand. And Natalie is 90 feet tall. How are you going to do anything to her from down here in the sand? Well, fine. Talk to Natalie. You twist your body and try to face her. You open your mouth. Natalie smiles patiently. Do you want? You eventually manage. Hina, I want you to grow as a person. I want you to understand how unbearable you are, how miserable you make everybody, because of your pathological need to be in control. I'm not... You can't finish the thought. Oh, you will be, she says. Once you finish broadening your perspective, do you need about another bottle of water? You shake your head. Okay. Let me... You gasp. Let you what? I need to... The key. Oh, I get what you mean, Natalie nods. Yeah, I can't let you do that. You're on the precipice of self-actualization. You just have to power through until you understand what a pathetic little jerk you've been. All you can do is gasp for air. I wish I could see what you're seeing, Natalie muses. I've developed so much tolerance, I'm not really feeling anything at all. You don't have the energy to provoke any more of Natalie's nonsense. Inventory. Floater bag and a tarnished key. Okay, can't can't do anything to Natalie. That makes sense. Although I think she's even bigger than she was. Love where your head's at. Um, what if we throw key at Natalie? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, she was 90 feet tall before. Now she's 300. Mm. Throw a key at Natalie. Natalie gets her hands on that key. You're completely doomed. Uh... Um... Huh. Punch, punch her? Nah, I tried kicking her before. Shit. Um, and I tried kissing her. I mean, yeah, obviously. Um, 
uh, push pillar onto Natalie. What about the sun? So push pillar onto Natalie. Nope, no dice. Hmm. Um, you can't see the sun. Natalie is standing in front of it. I mean, props for the implementation, though. Like, that is choice. Fuck. Uh, can we throw a, like, a fistful of sand at her? Or, oh, throw the bracelet at her. Throw bracelet at Natalie. You fling the silver bracelet at Natalie. It glances off her titanic leg and careens into the dunes, now lost forever. Well, yeah, so my first thought was like, oh, let's go back and like talk to more people or something. But no. Okay. It's like the boss scene to me. Um, yeah, no, F. F in the chat for our fancy bracelet. I was going to sell that, <laughs> get some money for books. Um, Self-actualized is not a verb I recognize. Um. Think. You wish you had called an ambulance back when you knew how. Focus. That's... You need to focus. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm trying. I'm trying to scroll back up to where it said that, but like, yeah, a hundred percent. You slowed down. Take a deep breath. It's going to be fine. You're going to take care of yourself, and then you're going to take care of everyone else, and everyone will be fine. Okay, let's keep going. You know, you can always ask for help, right? <laughs> Don't worry, sweetie. I'm here. Yeah, it's me, Negahina, your buddy. We're going to take this witch down together. I guess we don't have a lot to work with, but take a look around. See if there's anything you can use. And if you can't figure it out right away, just keep asking me for help, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, put key in hole. Climb to your knees and grope at the spigot. Stop that, Natalie whines, shoving you back in the sand. We're having a spiritual journey. All right. Responsible Anything? drug use. Everything is sand. Sand is in your teeth. Get sand? You grab a handful of sand. Yeah. Throw sand at Natalie, which I think you suggested. Your arms are like jelly. You don't have the strength. A futile moan is all that you can muster. Natalie leans down to look at you. What did you just say? Are you breaking through your preconceptions? Are you having a eureka moment? She brings her face close to yours, searching for signs of a breakthrough. Now she's close enough. You throw the sand into her eyes. Natalie shrieks and falls backward, clawing at her face. Eventually, her screams become a series of expletives that do not bear detailed transcription. All right, you can handle things on your own from here. This has been Negahina, signing off. Thanks, Negahina. Thank you, Negahina. Bookie and Hole. You wrap your fingers around the spigot and pull yourself up. Your arms are so weak. Your mouth is so dry takes both hands to get the key into its slot on the top of the spigot. You turn the key. Water spurts out of the spigot. Clear, 
pure water flowing into the sand, splashing all over your hands and your arms and your clothes. Drink water. Yeah! You stick oh, your hell face yeah. beneath the spigot and let the water fall into your mouth. It's not cold, but it's not as hot as everything else. It tastes amazing. When you can't drink anymore, you fall back into the sand. The desert has shrunk. And there's a shed here that wasn't there before. No, you tell yourself, the shed was always here. The desert isn't even a desert, it's just a pit of sand. Where Natalie, a normal sized person, is rubbing her eyes and crying a little. Finally, you're beginning to think clearly. The end. Would you like some supplemental materials? I sure effing would. Hell yeah. I was hoping you'd say that. Please press any key to continue. Appendix. Thunder rumbles, far away. Office. The place is kind of a mess. There's not enough space on the desk, so a bunch of documents are taped to the walls. The whiteboard easel is an inherently awkward object and manages to take up a lot of space. The rolling chair is shoved into a corner. There isn't really room to walk around in here while someone is sitting at the desk. Narrow passages lead northwest and southwest. Rain steadily taps on the window. Hmm. You hear rain on the roof, and that's about it. Um, the chair is a piece of junk, but they'll never get around to replacing it. Easel? Yeah, I'll check out the easel. It's a flimsy, collapsible easel. It doesn't belong in the building. It was a gift from a high school teacher who, just, who got frustrated with its flimsiness. On the easel is a whiteboard. Well, X whiteboard. There are a bunch of illegible notes and weird schematics on this whiteboard. Almost everything has been crossed out. Why not erased? To indicate that it's been taken care of. But here are some recognizable names. Zero, the cave. One, the deluge. Two, the beast. Three, the fortress. Four, the eyes. Hey, th that's not right. Hmm. Documents? What do you mean? The desk, the shelf of legal documents, or the wall? The wall. Oh, boy. Um... I meant the wall. Yeah, no, just, there are so many documents. Which, by the way, this post credit scene, this is the thing that made the biggest impression on me the first time I played it. The fact that, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. The fact that we're allowed to sort of go and explore after, you know, the post game, but to get some... To reuse the, the word of the night, the diegetic explanation of like kind of what's been going on here is appreciated. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Numerous pieces of paper have been taped to the wall with painter's tape so as not to arouse the ire of the building's custodial staff. Some of it might bear a closer look. On the wall are a class photo, an angry letter, and an orchestra poster. Well, read the letter. Obviously. Mr. Feeder, I've taken time to evaluate your story. Aesthetics of impermanence, a rope of chalk, as you requested. After careful consideration, I've concluded that I cannot lend my expertise to your work in any capacity until drastic changes are made. The depiction of Episco... <laughs> Episcopacidon induced hallucination in your story as a fun, fairy tale like dream world is grossly irresponsible and misleading. The medical accuracy with which you are so concerned is secondary to your social responsibility in representing the efforts, the effects of Episcopacidon abuse, a responsibility that you have thus far ignored. The following is a list of story elements that must be revised before I can move forward as your consultant. There were a couple more sheets attached to this, but I don't know where they went. This is a poster for the Scottish Chamber Orchestra. 
All the musicians are holding their instruments and smiling on some huge staircase somewhere in Edinburgh. In front is the conductor, with the biggest smile of all. I guess it's hard to see why I would have this. The woman in the back with the bassoon is Jessica Marinakis. And actually, her smile might be the biggest. She played. I see. I see. So we finally figured out that it was uh, bassoon. Like, that came up in one of our guesses. It did. I mean, I was just running through, you know, really brutal instruments to play. But... Uh, the class foe. Here we have a picture of a bunch of very happy children, each one holding a paper mache puppet in the shape of a different animal. The craftsmanship of these puppets is about what you'd expect from third graders. The teacher's puppet is a little more polished and has an arm that she can manipulate with a rod. Written on the back, 9-19-2019. Somehow these little rascals found out that their teacher would soon be starring in a computer game. I told them they'd have to wait until they were a little older to play it. Then they started babbling about what kinds of horribly violent video games their parents let me play. And I had to tell them that it was a game you had to read with no graphics. That cooled them down somewhat. Sorry. <laughs> I found your recent proposal very intriguing. Unfortunately, it's too late in the semester to organize anything like that. Remind me next year. But before then, finish a rope of chalk. Hina. The eye is dotted with a heart, sarcastically. Please don't get the wrong idea. A real friend who will end an affectionate letter with, Hey, and finish the thing you've been working on, you putz. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't entirely want to 100% this, just so that people finish the game so that they can also take a look at this. Uh, I am, however, going to save. Uh, what's one more thing in this room you want to take a look at, JRM? Well... I don't want to say like wander around northwest and southwest, but there are two whole rooms presumably that we haven't talked, we haven't uh, discovered. Yes, that's why I said one more thing in this room. Okay, um, let's look at the desk. Yeah, there's papers and stuff all over the place, and I guess some of it is kind of interesting. On the desk are a photograph of a birdhouse, a shelf of legal documents, a sheaf of legal documents, and a discharge summary. There's a waste basket. Okay, you gotta look in the trash can. <laughs> First rule of adventure games. Fair. Luckily, the cleaning staff don't come up here very often. So if something ends up in the trash by accident, there's plenty of time to recover it. In the waste basket, it is an arcane diagram. There's a lot going on here. A bunch of squares and triangles, a diamond with a cross on top of it. The words, wet, cold, dry, cold, wet, hot, dry, hot. And an extremely crude drawing of a medieval castle. Surely there's more interesting reading material around here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's where it is. Th th that's, it's the graffiti. Um, I would love to see both the legal documents and the discharge summary. All right. There are a few different drafts of the same document here. On top is the final version. The narrative compiled here purports to reflect only the recollections of the individuals involved. By continuing, you concede that I, the editor, bear no responsibility <laughs> for the felicitous representation of any objective fact associated with this narrative. Furthermore, you swear or affirm that you will not issue the editor or publicly report any corrections or recriminations concerning this narrative's accuracy. 
geographical, historical, medical, meteorological, or otherwise. Oh, right. This is the thing you agreed to earlier. What a helpful reminder for you. Uh, what was the other thing? I the the uh, discharge summary. That's just Natalie's documentation from when she got out of rehab. I think if I tell you any of the details, it's a HIPAA violation. Yeah, fair. Um, okay, so before we wrap up here, Ryan, thank you so much for being here tonight. This has been such a lovely experience. Um, before we get out of here, is there anything here that you are particularly proud of that like you think is worth looking at to point us to? No, thank you, my friend. Yeah, th this was really, really cool. It's really rare to be able to actually have, like, authors around. Um, but yeah, if there, if there is something in here that you absolutely would want somebody to see, I'd love to, to show it. Yeah, the, the, the tip of um, looking for help in the uh, Ron Paul 2012. <laughs> So beautiful. I never would have found that by myself. Uh, so who's what's her face? Uh, I think go northeast and then southwest. Got it. Uh, so we're in a library. This is only a room by virtue of being hemmed in by a bunch of tall bookshelves. In the middle of the space is a long table covered in research materials. Oh, I do Northwest. have to look at this table first. Northwest, my love. Uh, yes, we couldn't go northeast. Oh, my bad. So I picked northwest. The table is sort of the shape of a conference table, but I don't know how you'd fit a conference in this tiny space. Might be something cool to look at. A lengthy letter, a cardboard box, a pile of sketches, and a handwritten letter. Looking at the sketches, a note is paper clipped on top of the sketches. Hi, Ryan. Unfortunately, I don't have any photos of my entry from the incident. There was a big storm right after Hina called the police. Everything got washed away. I do have some sketches I drew to prepare for the event, though, and thought they might be useful. Xavier. The drawings are of a sultry demoness in several different states of undress. In one, she's sitting on the throne made of skulls. Each printout has a copyright Xavier Denary watermark somewhere on it. Uh, Xavier Denary. Cool, cool, cool. Very uh, fair. Um, you cannot tease me like that, man. Tell me why it's clever. But also, let's go southwest. Yeah. This is the classroom that time forgot. There's a chalkboard behind the podium. And the walls are done up in some very groovy red fabric. There are only 12 desks in here. And they're all in terrible shape. Come to think of it, I don't know if they even still teach any classes up here. The exits are northeast and southeast. One of the desks has a transcript sitting on it. Hmm. This is clearly a printout of notepad document. I guess not all of it is here. Interview with Faye Thompson. July 30th, 2017, page four. Does that, Alex, recollection, line up with what you remember? Uh, basically, yeah, basically. So then what happened after you talked with Dalek? I was alone for a while and my mind was playing tricks on me. I got very paranoid. I kept hearing things that weren't there. It took me a while to realize Alex should have come back. So I went looking for him and I saw him and Jessica holding each other on the ground. I thought they were... I'm not sure what you mean. I thought they were dead. I guess I was already hallucinating enough that that made sense to me. So I ran. Out into the street, crying for help. Into the highway? I thought it was all blocked off for construction. 
I don't remember. I might have jumped over the fence, I guess. I remember running across the torn up street and running across the train tracks. Oh. I think there are some bars and restaurants between the highway and the train tracks. Yeah, but I don't remember those. I remember crawling up the train tracks and over the tracks and down the incline to the river. Bunch of rocks down to the river. I skinned both my knees on those rocks. Oh. I think I was about to run right into the river, but then this huge dog comes out of the water. What? Continues on to the next page. Yeah, read next page. <laughs> well, he wasn't a real dog. Oh, that, that makes sense. Sure, sure. He was huge, like the size of a wolf. But he had these big, friendly eyes, and he started telling me that everything was going to be okay. I just needed to stay put and calm down. He kind of talked me down, I guess. Do you think it was a real person that you were hallucinating was a dog? Or a real dog that you were hallucinating was huge and could talk? Well, he definitely came up out of the river, so... Sure, sure. He stayed there and talked to me for a long time, and some of the stuff he said... We don't have to get into specifics. Sorry, it's just... I don't know if I could put it into words. He understood some stuff that... He was a very smart dog. Let's put it that way. So maybe you could put that in the game somehow. Gosh, yeah, definitely. I mean, hopefully. Can I ask you a question? Sure. That's all there is. No, that that's absolutely fair. Heck yeah. Like that I said is earlier, really cool. There's a lot of empathy for the characters here. Um, I think I think there is an awful lot here. Um, yeah, we could probably spend another two hours just on this wrap up. <laughs> Actually, how about we do this? Um, we have been at it for a good long time, so we do this every Tuesday. Uh, we play the most scintillating and visually enticing form of Twitch stream, which is Text Adventures, um, about 8.30 EST every Tuesday. Let's explore this post-game scene um, and talk about this game as a whole next Tuesday before we talk about this at Book Club the day afterwards. Yeah, that that sounds good. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do that, and uh, I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'm gonna leave it to you to uh, find a good button for uh, for next Tuesday. Does see that what I can good? do. Uh, I will see what I can do. It might be Taco Fiction. It works for me. Yeah, no. absolutely. Thank thank you for for hanging out. I could not think of a better way to spend a Tuesday night, truly. Yeah, yeah. Everybody have a, a really great holiday. Um, if you are in the U.S. or just feel like celebrating a good time with your friends over the next...